GMC Pharmacy, Heritage First Bank, Georgia Pacific, Mike Ford Auto Repair, High Tech Signs, Central Electrical Systems, Baker Mechanical Contractors, Medium Roofing, Joe Hill Lawnmower, the Wiki Washi Laundromat, <laughs> and Braden Burke State Farm Agency. Remember to support those folks. Also, Coach Mack wanted me to remind everyone that after tonight's game in the fifth quarter in the auxiliary gym, the SCA is sponsoring a fifth quarter activities. Everyone is invited as immediately following the game in the auxiliary gym. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll notice the group of young men and women coming towards the home side from the north end of the field, that is the Cave Springs Chorus. In just a moment, they'll be accompanied by the Coosa High School Marching Band, the greatest band in Dixie, as they sing and perform the national anthem. I need to make a correction on one of those last announcements. Tonight's chorus is from Garden Lakes. They also have a great course <laughs> under the leadership of Miss Mary Alcorn. She made me make sure that I corrected that. <laughs> That's what teachers do, man. If you get something wrong, they make you correct it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, Stand and remove your caps as we honor the greatest country in the world to play our national anthem.
you stay to get in here. Wonderful job, Don Lakes. Great job. The greatest marching band in Dixie. Appreciate Pardon it. Pardon me. Also at this time, uh, junior peewees and peewees and cheerleaders. I can't hear you when he's talking. Join in with a little pep rally at the south end of the stadium uh, led by that famous Eagle mom, Miss Melissa Shell. She's going to lead on the pep rally down there and get our guys fired up when they come out. we got to stay off the field. You'll see where the rest of them are lined up. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much, Big Kahuna. We are at Branch Bragg Field at Eagle Stadium where tonight we are treated to the Darlington Tigers and the Coosa Eagles. Very fired up about this matchup and really enjoyed the national anthem. I wish you guys could have heard it. It was the Garden Lakes Chorus, which was accompanied by the Coosa Eagles Marching Band. The greatest marching band in Dixie, as they call it, and I got to tell you, Eddie, those kids did a phenomenal job. It was a great rendition. They did. Them. It was it was it was good to hear. You, you, usually, you think the band's going to drown out the chorus, but they didn't, and it was all fit together perfectly. Did a great job of doing the national anthem. They really did. And of course, in our first segment, we're going to kind of start to set the stage for this particular matchup. And these two teams definitely have seen each other in the past quite a bit. Darlington leads the series 15 to 5. They have won the last five meetings. Coosa's last win in the series dates back to 2004, and Eagles fans will remember that was when Scott Chandler was the head coach here. The last two meetings were in 2014 and 2015. It was a period of time when Darlington had moved back up to double A for just a couple of seasons, then quickly moved back down to single A. So this is the first meeting of the teams since Darlington moved back down, and this is a matchup that those couple of years that were pretty close games and really exciting people got fired up about, so I was glad to hear it when the head coach is, of course, Todd Wheeler and Tommy Aether were able to come together and figure out a way to put this matchup on the schedule this year. And so last week, of course, we saw Pepper. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But this week it's Coosa. So we've got, you know, Darlington playing against some county rivals, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. And it's Darlington has for years had to travel when they were in single A and could, couldn't get anybody in Floyd County to play them. They had to travel to some just some odd games like, well, went down to Orlando a couple of years, went up to Murphy, North Carolina to play up there, which was pretty cool, but uh, it was a long way to travel. And I think it, it gets a little tiresome year after year to do that. So it's good to play these in-county uh, games like this. Uh, this is just a great atmosphere, good time to be here. And as hot as we were last week, <laughs> it's as pleasant tonight 
as last week was hot. It wasn't Pepperell's fault that it was so hot, but it was hot over there at Pepperell. It, it really was, and right now it's about 80 degrees. I don't even think it feels like it, it, it's that hot. Now the sun's going down. By the time the game's over, we'll probably be lower 70s, maybe even creep into the 60s before this one's in the books. So we'll, we'll certainly take that. Well, the Darlington Tigers start off the season with a bang. They are 1-0 and after picking up a win over Pepperell. It was a tougher weekend last weekend for the Coosa Eagles. They played here at Branch Bragg Field. They, of course, along with some other uh, games that took place last week, ended up in lightning delays and weather delays, and we didn't experience that. We dodged the bullet on that, but out here they, they had a delay of about two hours only for the Coosa Eagles to fall behind and fall short. I think the final score in that game was 18-15. to 15. Darlington, on the other hand, down midway through the second quarter last weekend down in Lindale, scored the game's final 37 points en route to their 44-14 to 14 route of the Dragons. Now, I would, I would say that probably a lot of people were not necessarily surprised that Darlington found a way to win the game, but I think most people would have been surprised if you told them at the beginning of the game that Darlington went at 44-14. to That was quite a turn of events during that game. Well, I know everybody would have been surprised. I was surprised. I was surprised to see Darlington win. I was expecting a close loss, and uh, uh, er- but everything that could go right for Darlington went right. Uh, it- Tommy Atha had a 56-yard pick six that uh, – he just came down with it, nobody in front of him, and just uh, took off down the field. Uh, passing, Griffin Brewster was just pinpoint on his passes, and uh, it was it was just a, an impressive thing. And of course, tonight we got some questions. We want to: Is Darlington that good? Yes, definitely. And this uh, should go a long ways to answering it. I don't feel like Kusa got a fair shot last week. When you get a two-hour lightning delay, you really don't know what might have happened had it been a regular game. So this uh, should answer some questions for Coosa and Darlington tonight. Yeah, I agree 100% and kind of piggyback on what you're saying. You know, with Pepperell, we knew they had some talent, but we also knew that it was kind of unseasoned talent that they're developing. And when you look at Coosa, they got some experienced players on this team. Of course, their quarterback, Logan, Logan Pledger, he started last year. Jalen Hodge at running back, everybody's real familiar with him. And then one of the matchups in this game that everybody was excited about when it was announced that these two teams would play, would be the matchup between Sean Brown on the line and Tate Ratledge for Darlington because those are two big-time prospects. I know Tate has pretty much his pick of where he wants to go, although I hear Georgia and Alabama are the ones that he's probably most interested in. But Sean Brown, he is verbally committed to Tennessee, so we're talking SEC-caliber guys going head-to-head. So that's one matchup to look for in this game tonight, Eddie. Well, that tells you a lot that the SEC, when the SEC looks at a guy, he's you know he's one of the best athletes around so uh sean sean brown must be tough and of course uh you were talking we were talking earlier about the experience that kusa has more experience than pepperell did because i asked kevin hunt on the way over here tonight the defensive coordinator i said who are you more worried about uh for kusa and he said well number two three twelve and forty three and of course that's uh jalen hodge sean brown keenan dixon and gavin hughes uh all seniors uh all with a wealth of experience and uh, all good athletes. No question. Eddie, we need to take a break, and then we'll come back and continue our conversation about the matchup for you tonight. It's the Darlington Tigers and the Coosa Eagles out here at Branch Bragg Field, Eagle Stadium, and we're going to take a three- or four-minute break, and we come back, we'll go ahead and continue to break down tonight's matchup on WLAQ AM 1410. We'll be back. Okay. Good stuff. Sorry. Okay, let me see if I can get. Okay. Okay, is that any better? Okay, well, we'll find out, I guess. Okay. <clears throat>
back live at Eagle Stadium. Matt Davis and Eddie Evans with you as we get ready for the Darlington Tigers at Coosa Eagles. And going back into our conversation, we'll talk a little bit about the coaching matchup tonight. Of course, Todd Wheeler, synonymous with high school football in the Rome Floyd area, was a star at Pepperell, was a captain under Vince Dooley at UGA, briefly with the New Orleans Saints in the NFL, came back to help coach at Pepperell High School back around, I don't know, it was probably mid to late 90s when he landed there. And he's pretty much been a coach at every school in the area in one capacity or another. And this is his sixth season at the helm of the Eagles. He's 26 and 28 here, but he has led his team to the playoffs a couple of times and made it to the second round in 2014. And there are high hopes for the team this season, no question about it. And, of course, Todd Wheeler is a fantastic human being, great coach. He's got a great coaching staff behind him, so you know his team is going to be ready for the matchup tonight and won't be intimidated to get out here and play a really tough team. Yeah, he's got another former Pepper coach on his uh, squad, uh, Jeff Shiflett, one of his uh, assistant coaches. And uh, Todd has been a, been a name. He, everybody in uh, Rome that is interested in football has been aware of him for many years now, and he's done a done a good job out here. And he and Tommy Ather are good friends. They've been good friends ever since uh, Todd came back to Rome. Oh, no doubt about it. And to talk a little bit about Tommy Eighth, of course, last week I ran down, you know, that it was his 17th season and his win-loss record. He added another win to that last week. So this week I'll, I'll point out something. I ran into a gentleman earlier this week, and, and he pointed something out that is so true. And when you look back at last week's game, one of the things that happens with a Darlington coach team, and it's been the case for years and years under Tommy Atha and, of course, Jerry Sharp before him, one of the things that the coaching staff does so well at Darlington is making adjustments, not just at halftime, but throughout the game. And let's face it, when you looked at the way the teams lined up there in the second half, I mean, it was just night and day from what we experienced in that first half. So you got to feel like some of that has to do with some of the coaching adjustments that were made there at halftime and, and got them ready for that second half. Well, it was, and, and it, it was quite a stark difference in uh, Darlington in the second half and Pepperell in the second half. Uh, not that the coaches from Pepperell weren't trying to make adjustments, but uh, the Darlington coaches, their, their adjustments were right on the money and just what was needed at the right time. Very, They were... A very impressive win for Darlington last week. Of course, we're going to find out, are they really that good last this, this week? Absolutely, and a quick keys to the game. Of course, Kusa, they struggled to get on track against Tryon last week. Had a long delay because of the weather. Those things can really kind of get inside your head and stop the flow of the game. They're going to need to be ready at kickoff to play nearly, nearly flawless football here in this situation because obviously Darlington is one of those teams that if you make mistakes, they are really going to make you pay. So Kusa has to be near perfect, I think, if they're going to win this game. And, of course, with the experience that Kusa has, I would say that, you know, Darlington has to make very little mistakes as well. Yeah, they have, they have to be mistake-free. Uh, of course, last week they did well. They weren't mistake-free. They thought it was a fumble on the 20-yard line. It gave Pepperell uh, a quick, easy touchdown. Uh, so, so Darlington can't afford that this week. And as you said, all the skill players and all the important players on the, on the line of scrimmage are seniors. They're just uh, uh, looking on this roster here. There's just a lot of 12s on here denoting a senior player. And the captains are on the field. Jalen Hodge for Cusa. Also, LaVonda Millsap. You've got... Also, Dakota Roper and then Logan Pledge and the Pledger, the quarterback for the Coos Eagles. We'll give you the Darlington Tigers here in just a couple of moments, but we're having the coin toss as we speak. As a matter of fact, we'd better send it back to the studio for another quick, uh, let's call it a two-and-a-half-minute break. We'll come back for the kickoff. We'll tell you who won the toss when we come back in two-and-a-half minutes. Thanks. Darlington won the toss, they'll defer. Okay, so we'll start on offense. The best thing Darlington Tigers won the toss, but have deferred to the second half. Acoustic Eagles will receive the kickoff to start the game. 
Hot Eagles fans, get on your feet now. Let them know you're out here. Let's support them. Give them some love. Back live at Branch Bragg Field. Both teams have just made their exciting entrance as we get ready for toe to meet leather here in a couple of minutes. By the way, as we were going into the break, I said I would mention the captains tonight for Darlington. I already mentioned Kusa. You got Roth Wilcox, Barrett Wade, Tommy Atha, and Rhett McDermott. They were the captains. And by the way, the Darlington Tigers won the toss. They deferred, and of course, Kusa will receive the ball to begin the game, and we will have the start of it in just a couple of minutes. And Eddie, there are other area games tonight on our sister station, 95.7 Ridge. You get Cass versus Adairsville in the Northwest Georgia game of the week. Model is at Sonoraville, Rotmert at Central Carroll, Wesleyan at Chattooga, Christian Heritage is at Gordon Central, Pepperell, Rome, Armurchie, and Calhoun. Well, they're all off tonight after playing in week zero last week. Wow. Early in the year to have an off week, isn't it? It really is. And I, it's funny because I have people ask me about week zero all the time, and I explain it to them the best I can, and they just kind of look at me like I've got three heads. I'm like, either I'm not explaining it well, or I don't <laughs> understand it myself. I think there might be a little bit of both going on there. Well, some of the uh, concepts in high school sports, I remember I just had figured out the, the penetration rule when we went to uh, sudden death overtime, like or the college style of overtime like we do now so uh, there are some arcane uh, rules that are hard to keep up with we got two men back deep here for Kusa to try to return the kick Keenan Dixon and also you're going to have Terry Curry back deep they're going to be standing around the five yard line teeing it up as always is going to be Alex Little who did some good things in the game the other night against Pepperell, hard to believe that was a week ago. This week went by fast. I don't know if it was the, that, the case for you, but it sure was for me. There's the kickoff from the 40. It's going to be brought out by number five, and then again, that is Terry Curry. He goes off to the right side. Actually, that was Keenan Dixon. He's going to be pulled down around the 16, so not a good return there for Kusa. Well, good coverage by Darlington, but also he took off, was running, and then came to a stop and enabled Darlington to catch up and just swarm him under just to a uh, bad mistake. You never want to come to a stop in a football game. Nothing good ever happens. So pretty poor field position. They actually spotted it a little bit kinder than I thought they were initially. So it looks like Kusa starts on their own 18 instead of 16. So they'll get lined up in a shotgun formation. They run a spread offense, but we were talking about this earlier. They mostly run out of the spread, or at least that's been the case over the last couple of years. They're going to run this one up the middle with big Jalen Hodge, and they're able to get several yards out of that first down play, and I think he actually kind of squirted out there at the end of the play, maybe tacked on another couple of yards. That was a good hard run from Jalen Hodge to start the game. Well, that's what that's what Kusa wants to do. Uh, get that run even though they're, they look like they're lined up to just throw the ball every play they're going to run the ball as much as possible and that was a good run a good way to a good good gain on first down they only got four yards now to make a first down second down and four logan pledger is the starting quarterback he's a senior he's got a lot of experience and i think that's certainly one of the feathers in the cap for this team they got some guys that had some playoff experience last year, so they're used to big game experiences. Logan Pleasure takes a snap from the shotgun. They'll put it in the air, and he's going to be a little bit over the wide receiver, Sean Brown's shoulder, the tight end, and that was not a catchable pass, I don't think. No, believe. just overthrown, uh, and he was covered pretty well. I don't know if you could have thrown it where he'd catch it if uh, he could have uh, could have completed it anyway. Just a little uh, swing out pass out to hit the quarterback's left, and uh, – just a little over his head and probably wise to throw it away. Third down and four as Kusa gets lined up at the 24-yard line, working right to left. They're in their black jerseys and gray britches with gray numbers with white trim. Darlington's in their white uniforms with purple letters and numbers. 
Here comes the snap to Pledger. He's dropping back, looking to throw. There's a little pass up the middle to Sean Brown. It's broken up. That was great defense by Darlington. Yes, uh, good defense. They were lined up in a trips left formation and uh, tried to hit that inside slot man on there. And uh, Tate Rattledge was up in the air, and I think he may have knocked it, uh, deflected it. So we're going to see Kusa have to punt this one away, and typically we see Logan Pledger punt it, but it looks like in this case they're going to line Keenan Dixon back up there just as I say that. So Keenan Dixon to punt it away here for the Eagles, and we're going to have a couple of men back here for the Darlington Tigers. Demetrius Rogers is one of them, and then there's a gentleman standing just beyond the far hash, and I'm trying to catch his number. I think it's Casey Gunn, unless I'm badly mistaken. That or Roth Wilcox, I can't tell exactly here. I think it's Casey Gunn. I think you're right. We'll wait until he turns and we can catch his number. We'll, we'll let you know. But here comes the kick from Dixon from around the 15-yard line. Not a real far kick. Got some air under it. Uh-oh. Look at Mr. Demetrius Rogers running down the field with it. Helmet comes off, but he gets down to the 25-yard line. Excellent field position. That was a big mistake there by the Coosa Eagles. Well, dangerous looking return the way he had to come running up so far, but right in his right in his grip and, and nobody in front of him. They did well to catch him uh, inside the 30-yard line like that. Good field position for Darlington to start out now yeah. on the near hash mark. And they're going to start on the 28-yard line inside Coosa territory with 10.43 left here in our opening quarter. This is the first possession of the game for Darlington. We are scoreless here early in this game. Darlington gets ready to line up against this Coosa defense, and they've really got to pin their ears back. Griffin Brewster has them lined up in the shotgun, had a big weekend last week and threw three touchdown passes with six or 9 of 16, I believe, passing. They're going to hand it off, and this is a little trickeration. There's the pass. It is complete to Casey Gunn. Touchdown. And that was from Barrick Wade, a wide receiver that went in motion, and a touchdown for the Darlington Tigers. 28-yard pass play on the first play from scrimmage. Caught him by surprise. Caught me by surprise. Caught you by surprise, too, didn't he? A little bit. Just roll out there, and he just stopped, uh, planted his feet. Uh, Kusa guy realized it, but just couldn't get there quick enough, and he just... Threw it right on the money to him, and all he had to do was turn around and uh, tiptoe into the end zone. Indeed he did. So that is a touchdown for the Darlington Tigers on the first play from scrimmage on their first possession of the game after Kusa had punted away on the previous play. Here comes the kick from Little. It is going to be up, and it is good. So 7 to nothing lead just like that, Darlington Tigers. That happened as quick as it possibly can. Only way could have been quicker if he'd run that punt in the end zone. That's just one play, one touchdown. Very efficient. Pretty unbelievable start to the game here for the Darlington Tigers. And now they will get ready to kick it back off to the Coosa Eagles. And we have 10.32 left here in the opening quarter. Glad you're with us tonight on WLAQ. We got an exciting night of football action on both of our stations, of course. Darlington and Coosa here tonight, but on our sister station, Cass is playing at Daresville at Cass. And then after that, the Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show, which we always enjoy. Had fun listening to that program on the way home from last week's game down at Lindale. Of course, at that point in time, they were just waiting on some games to get started back with the lightning and weather delays that took place. How late did they stay there that night? Did they go home at a regular time, or did they stay there? They went home, and then the Coosa trying game came back on, and it wasn't over until after midnight. End over end kick. It's going to be brought out by number five, Terry Curry, for Coosa. He stays up, goes off to the right side, and almost goes out of bounds around the 20-yard line before Darlington hauls him in and tackles him. So a little bit better field position this go around. Catches it on the five, takes off to He's on the uh, far side of the field from us and uh, stays on that far side down there and, and uh, still uh, gets a little bit better field position, but again comes to a stop while he's running, trying to pick his way through there. So the Coos Eagles get ready to line up, already trailing this one with 10.22 left in the first quarter, 7 to nothing after a first play from scrimmage touchdown pass from the Darlington Tigers, 28-yard pass, and it was a, a trick play. There's the snap. They're going to toss it to one of the running backs. That was Terry Curry, and he's going to go forward. Kind of moves the pile, but then his forward motion stopped. I don't think he maybe but got a yard or two out of that play at the most. At most, that was a jet sweep coming from uh, quarterback right to, to the left, and uh, Darlington had some penetration on that side of the line and just halted, halted that play, and he was forced to cut into the middle and uh, where there was a whole plethora of Darlington players there. 
I like that plethora. <laughs> I remember that word being used in Three Amigos. Do you remember that I movie? I do that. Do you remember that movie yet? That's where I learned that word, actually. <laughs> Second down and eight coming up for the Coosa Eagles from their own 23-yard line. Shotgun formation, Jalen Hodge flanked to the right of the quarterback, Logan Pledger. They're going to put it in the air and pretty deep, but he overthrew his wide receiver who had managed to get himself fairly open. That's Keenan Dixon, but that's going to be an incomplete pass. Well, Roth Wilcox on the coverage there. That was just a, a sprint down the field over here on the near side to the quarterback's left, and he had uh, had him beat, is just overthrown. That's a dangerous receiver right there. That's one of the ones that Coach Hunt was worried about. And he'll also, from time to time, swap out with Logan Pledger at quarterback, and he's a really fast runner, as you could tell in that round. Yep. 9.28 left first quarter. This is a big third down and eight coming up for the Coosa Eagles. Definitely don't want to end up their first couple of drives on punts. Shotgun formation. Jalen Hodge in the backfield. Quarterback rolling out, looking to throw. He's got company in the backfield, puts it in the air, and it's almost intercepted by Roth Wilcox. Couldn't hang on, but Coos is going to have to punt it away. Well, better coverage that time for Darlington, although it uh, – it wasn't a sprint pass. He had stopped and trying to come back to it, sort of like a back shoulder fade. But uh, Wilcox was just right there to knock it down. Looked like he had a chance to intercept it, but knocked it down. So fourth down and, and ten. So or, Ke that's eight. Keenan Dixon's going to punt it away from around the ten-yard line here in a couple of moments. And you've got Gunn and also Demetrius Rogers back to return the punt. And we wait on the snap. There it is from Sean Brown. Here's the kick. It's getting over in. Gunn's going to grab it at the, around the 48-yard line. He's heading down the field, down to the 40. And, again, the Darlington Tigers have great field position. Not as good as last time, but you'll take it. Well, the uh, field position is uh, definitely in Darlington's favor so far. Uh, Coosa hasn't gotten past their own 30 yet, and Darlington uh, is inside the – Coos is 50 every time, so at the 41 right now. It almost feels like they're picking up where they left off in the second half of the game against Pepper last week. Well, I know the Darlington coaches are hoping so and the Darlington fans. But, again, this is a senior-laden team for Coosa. I don't look for them to fold. Darlington comes back to the line of scrimmage, and they are ready to go. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers to the near side, one on the far, working left to right. Brewster takes the snap. He's going to throw a quick out to the right side. That's over to Barrick Wade. He connects, but looks like he's going to get nothing on the plays. He turned to run. He was greeted by a couple of Coosa Eagles. Uh, they not fooled at all by that. That was uh, LaVonda Millsap on that tackle and just ate him up. Got a half a yard gain out of it. I'm surprised he got that far. Second down and a long nine. They'll line back up in shotgun formation. Colin Rogers in the backfield with Griffin Brewster. Brewster ready to take the snap. Looks off to the sidelines. They've got the big cards up there having a look at them and changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like we may have a delay. Nope, false start. That's the first penalty of the game, isn't it? It is. <coughs> Not sure who moved that time. That's going to back Darlington up, so now they're going to be second in about 14 now. 8.26 remains in our opening quarter. Darlington was able to strike first after Kusa had to punt on their first drive of the game and a 28-yard pass from Barrick Wade, and it was to Casey Gunn, wasn't it? Uh, it was Roth Wilcox. Roth with Wilcox, excuse me. I needed to write that down. Shotgun formation, second down and 14. Ball is on the 46-yard line in Coosa territory. Griffin Brewster puts a nice ball in the air, and oh, oh my almost goodness, a great catch. almost a great catch from Carson Swiger. Dove and reached up to grab it and just couldn't hang on, but what an excellent effort by Swiger. What a throw by Griffin. I mean, he put it in there. He was covered up. He had two guys covering him, and he put it right in the middle of him and uh, just – the, the fall to the ground just knocked the ball loose from him. They sent him in a pass motion coming from the quarterback's right all the way to the left-hand side of the field and got him out there. Eddie, that would have been a highlight real play right there if he would have been able to haul that one in. That was, yes, you're right. So this will be third down and 15. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers on either side of the foundation. All right, formation, excuse me. Empty backfield, man goes in motion, and we're going to have a flag. That's our second flag here in this series. 
I didn't see what the call was. That was another false start. Two of them. Going the wrong way, Eddie. Yep. Well, uh, Darlington's offense is certainly helping Coos's defense on here. Just They're got back on the other on their own side of the 50 for the first time in the game. Yeah, Darlington on their own 49-yard line, as you pointed out, getting ready for a third down and 20 coming up. I just got a score update for you in case anybody's interested. Adairsville's up over Cass right now, 7 to nothing. We'll be feeding you scores from other games throughout the evening. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. They're going to go with Demetrius Rogers. Finds a hole, stays up, gets across the 45, and is – Going to be about, I don't know, 15 yards short of the first down. Yep, maybe 14. So it's going to be fourth and 14. Well, they're going to have to punt it away here on this play. More than likely, they got big man Tate Rattledge ready to do the punting duties. Probably the biggest punter, as we pointed out last week, in the state of Georgia. Jared Lorenzen of punters. If he ever gets his foot over above his waist, that ball don't take that far to go. <laughs> so a promising drive. And great field positions ends up in a punt. So that's a missed opportunity for Darlington. Now Kusa has to try to take advantage of it and try to even things up. That's a long punt that's going to go back into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Nope, Darlington tries to bat it back in, but his feet touched, and that one's coming back out to the 20. Yeah, in high school, if it breaks the plane, it's a touchback. It broke the plane before he ever got there. Nice punt. That was, what, a 51-yard punt? Pretty awesome. But uh, net 31 after bringing it out to the 20. Well, we've got 725 left in our opening quarter, and Eddie right now it's 7 to nothing in favor of the Darlington Tigers here on the road. And, and really, when you look back at the game, you hope that you don't realize how much of a missed opportunity that was. They had the ball on the 41-yard line in Coosa territory and couldn't get anything going, and a part of it was the penalties. Big part of it. Shotgun formation. Here is the snap from the 20. They're going to hand it off and get to about nowhere. Uh, lost. Lost, lost, lost the yard. Yep. That was just a uh, quarterback took it and went to his right into the middle, of, into the teeth of that Darlington line over there, and there's just nowhere to go. Tate Rattledge in on the tackle. So, so the Coosa Eagles will line up now second down and 11 with the ball on their own 19-yard line after losing a yard on that last play. Cade Brock also in on that tackle. They're going to line up with a couple of wide receivers here to the near side. You've got Terry Curry and Malachi Martin, and then you got one far to the right side. They're working right to left. Keenan Dixon, and we're going to have a timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. 6.42 remains. Opening quarter. Darlington up 7 to nothing. We'll be back from Branch Bragg Field in 30 seconds. Back at Branch Bragg Field, and just as we went to the break, I got another update from the studio, and this one's from the Rockmart game that's being played at Central Carroll. And right now, Rockmart is up seven to nothing. And when we're talking about 7AA football, the team that everybody talks about that should be the team to beat this year is Rockmart. And after seeing the way things went last week with Darlington and Pepperell, I think that probably people think that even more so. And, you know, they won the region last year in 7AA and, and just had a great year. And they pretty much are stocked with the same talent they yeah, had. Yeah, blessed with a whole lot of team speed. Oh, you are not kidding. Well, Kusa lines up here with a second down and 11 from their own 19, working right to left, dropping back, looking to pass. They're going to put it in the air, and that one was picked off. I believe oh, that nope. he hang on. No, nope, they're going to say he dropped no, it. No, he dropped it. That was number 32, Tommy Atha, who had a pick six in last week's game against Pepperell, and I think that it kind of hit the ground as he was trying to get it Must have been. Them. Maybe he was dreaming of that honeymoon <laughs> bakery cake that he got last year, last week. And that reminds me, stay tuned after the game tonight, and we got a long way to go as we award the Honeymoon Bakery Icing on the Cake player of the game. We always enjoy doing that. 
Shotgun formation, four wide receiver set. Quarterback's going to tuck, and he's going to have to run, and he's got nowhere to go. He kind of slides. So he's going to pick up maybe two or three yards, but they're going to have to punt for the third time in a row, Eddie. Well, Tate Riley's coming in from the uh, quarterback's right-hand side and almost got to him and uh, knocked him down before he got in. And Darlington did a good job of uh, just filling in that middle. They didn't get out of their lane, the rushing lanes. And they were just there, and he had nowhere to go. So the Eagles go three and out three times in a row and just have not been able to get any offense going at all in this game. Darlington's just been suffocating them, as you mentioned, at the line of scrimmage. And now we'll see Keenan Dixon punted away here for the Coosa Eagles with a couple of men back. Again, Casey Gunn and Demetrius Rogers. The kick's going to go towards Gunn, and he's going to let it drop, and it is going to bounce all the way down to about the 44-yard line in Darlington Territory. So this is their worst field position of the game, but if your worst field position of the game is on your own 44-yard line, you're doing You're doing right. pretty good. Yeah, you can't complain much about uh, the way things have bounced for you tonight. That was one uh, they just that was too short to get to, hit the ground and took a, a good roll for them there. That may be something for that punter to think about. He may want to try that rather than booming them up in the air and letting them catch them in the air. They're actually going to spot that one at the 47-yard line on Darlington's side of the field. And so they will line up almost at midfield to begin this next drive. They're up 7 to nothing. And the last possession they started on the Coosa 41 really had an opportunity there but couldn't get anything going, and it was a lot to do with penalties. They're going to throw a quick out here to Barrick Way to screen pass. He stays up, gets down inside the 40-yard line where they haul him in outside uh, of bounds, and that was a really good play to open up the series. Well, that was just a, 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 what we call a pop pass. Lined, he was lined up over here on the right, and Griffin just took it, and uh, he just took a step back, threw it to him. Number nine, Gil Maurer was downfield doing some good blocking for him, enabled him to pick up about 15 extra yards. Good job by Gil. Shotgun formation trips to the far side of the formation. One here to the near side. They're going to throw a quick out to the left side this time. That goes to Casey Gunn, breaks a tackle, but then he's going to be gobbled up by Coos's number 43, Gavin Hughes, and hauled out of bounds. And so what looked like it could have been a pretty positive play turns into a gain of mm, about a yard. Well, that was the same play to the opposite side. They went to the left this time. Uh, Last about play two yards. To the right, yeah. So, uh, Coos are red at that time. It's hard to do the same thing twice in a row. So we'll line up in a shotgun formation for this next play. Casey Gunn is going to be wide to the far side. We'll have a couple of wide receivers here on the near side. Line up in the slot is going to be... I think Gil Maurer, yeah, it is. They're going to hand it off to Colin Rogers. This will be, I believe, his first carry of the game. There's not really that much there for him. He might have picked up a yard. They just tried to uh, go right between guard and tackle on that left-hand side of the offensive line, and Kusa just having none. He actually picked up more yards than I thought he did. He picked up about three yards. So he's going to bring up third and five, third and six. Eh? So third and six from the 31-yard line. In Coosa territory, Darlington with the ball. 444 remains here in our first quarter. Darlington's up seven to nothing. They scored on a 28-yard pass play from Barrett Wade to Wilcox, Roth Wilcox, on a trick play. And we're gonna have it's like some stopping. No play. indication yet. Mm -mm. I never saw a flag come out. Perfect night for high school football, especially when you consider the fact that it's the second week of the season. We're still in August, and we're already under 80 degrees. I think this time last week we were probably close to mid-90s with the humidity soaring through. With 120% humidity, yeah. It was, it was really, really hot, but today we're getting a break from it, which is super nice. Official timeout. The player is in, but it'll still be third and sixth. I don't think there was an equipment problem. You know, that's a point of emphasis amongst referees in, in the National Federation of High Schools this year is proper equipment. They don't want to see knee pads up above their knee like you see in a lot of, seen in a lot of college teams. And they want to make sure everything's worn correctly. 31-yard line, Darlington lines up with third and six on Coosa's side of the field. They'll line up with an H-back, running back back in the backfield. And the quarterback's on the run. He's got company, almost got him by his shoestrings, has to kind of dump it out of bounds. 
And that is going to bring up fourth down, and that play got blown up really quick. Yeah, they got a lot of penetration in there and should have got him down. He did well to pull pull away from it and uh, wisely threw the ball out of bounds. And, I mean, you can't say enough good things about Griffin Brewster. He's got a good, accurate arm. He can move his legs quite a bit, and he makes really sound decisions, and, and that's what you want to see. And, I mean, the guy's a junior. they got a whole other year after this one with him. Just, just going to get better. So Darlington will punt the ball away. It looks like Tate Ratledge is on to handle the punting duties again. And nobody going to go back deep here for the Coosa Eagles. And they're going to run a trick play. They snap it to Darlington's number 14, who is Frank Manning. And he takes off running, but they don't get enough to get the first down. So a turnover on downs. But at the same time, still not very good field position for Coosa. Well, it's, it's their best field position of the game starting. And it's going to be on the 27-yard line. So, And they have uh, I guess they figure they've, they've held them pretty well and are not afraid of their offense. So like you say, Kusa starts on their own 27 with 3.59 after the fake punt came up short and a turnover on downs there for Darlington. So Darlington's had that one good drive where they scored on the opening play of their first drive of the game. They're going to hand it to Jalen Hodge. Nice stiff arm there for him. He stays up and gets a really hard fault, three or four runs. If you're a head coach, that's what you want to see. He just kept on plugging. Well, that was uh, Darlington where he was trying to go, which is into the middle of the line from the left-hand side of the formation. Darlington was there to meet him, and he had to cut back and go, and he picked most of those yards up on his own effort. Got about five or six, and, and like you say, that was a 100% effort from Jalen Hodge, and he's one of those guys that's got some speed, but he's got really big, strong legs, and even when you make contact with him, you got to work pretty hard to get him down because he just keeps he's not a, Yeah, turning. he's not an easy guy to bring down. Shotgun formation, second and four here for Kusa. They're still on their side of the field. They try to pitch it to Hodge. The ball comes out. He does a good job of getting down on it because Darlington had a player, Tommy Atha, who almost picked it I, up. I thought he had it. I did and, too. Uh, just took a good bounce. And uh, Sean Brown, I mean, uh, Hodge, able to, to get that ball back. So Kusa's going to line up here with third and eight after losing a couple of yards, but they're lucky that they still have the football, to be honest with you. Yeah. So they'll see if they can get something going. Third and long has not been kind to the Kusa Eagles in their first three drives of the game. But let's see if they can turn their fortunes here on this play. Shotgun, man goes in motion. Here comes the snap. Logan Pledger's rolling to his right, looking downfield, trying to find somebody to get it to. Puts it in the air, and he connects with Keenan Dixon around the 40-yard line. Kept his eyes on the wide receiver. He had company, trusted his offensive line, and made a really good throw. Well, he was under extreme duress there. Tate Rattledge was chasing him down, and uh, he just very calmly st stayed in there and he kept rolling and uh, put a strike in there to him about uh, 15 yards down the field. That was, without a doubt, the best play from the Coosa Eagles of the game so far. And, again, as you pointed out, Logan Pledger and his poise under duress, that, that was an excellent play. And, you know, sometimes when you look back at games and you see a play like that on third and long and they make a really good play, uh, sometimes it can kind of be a catalyst to kind of get the offense going. Darlington certainly hopes that's not the case. There's the snap. Logan Pledger fakes the handoff, tucks and runs a design play. It looked like to me, and he picks up about four or five yards. That was a design play. That was not an option. He just he faked it in there uh, to uh, Sean Brown and just took it and uh, kept going. I mean, Jalen Hodge just faked it to Jalen Hodge, took it, but that, that was just a, a quarterback run all the way. So Logan Pledger has got him moving down the field. This will bring up second and a, a short six. Ball's on the 46-yard line, still on Kusa's side of the field. We're down to the 140 mark here of the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Darlington leads, but Kusa's starting to get a little bit of rhythm here on offense on this drive. Their first drive of the game. Two wide receivers to the far side. Jalen Hodge is going to be flanked to the quarterback's right side. They hand it off to him, jumps over a couple of defenders, breaks a couple of tackles, stays up, gets down to the 44. There's a flag that came in. He got a first down, and we'll see what the call is going to be. I don't know if that's a face mask or not thrown where you usually see a hole. But, uh, that was just good running. He kept, he, they, he'd give him that leg, and then he'd pull it away from him, and, and they weren't able to bring him down. 
It's going to be a hold called on the offense, actually. Okay. Yeah. So they're going to mark this off, it looked like, from the end of the play, unless I'm badly mistaken. It's a spot foul, yep. So he's, uh, he's going to end up, after all said and done, with a one-yard gain and uh, still a second down. So Cusa will get ready to line up here with a second down and five, still on their side of the field. That was a good-looking run by Jalen Hodge, but he had a little help from the hold. Apparently so, but uh, nifty running on his part. Shotgun formation. Here's the second down and five play. They put it in the air. Good coverage right there by Roth Wilcox. A little bit too good. He grabbed his jersey. They're going to call pass interference on that one. The official is right on top of it. I think that might be a home call right there. I don't think they were running shoulder to shoulder. Did you see him grab a he jersey? He grabbed at his jersey. At so that's going to be 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So the Eagles will get across the field into Darlington's side. They get a first down with the help of the tug of the jersey and the pass interference call. First drive of the game for Kusa here. Starting to establish themselves offensively. And, I mean, the way things have gone, it feels like they should be down 21 to nothing. They're very fortunate to be in the position they're yes, in. Yes, they are. Because Darlington has had phenomenal field position all three of their possessions in the game and have only been able to score on that first possession. And at that point in time, especially when they got the ball on the 41-yard line of Kusa, that second drive, I thought, uh-oh, here we go again. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers to the near side, one on the far man went in motion. They're faking to the motion man. Quarterback's going to tuck and run, and this time the Tarlington defense is all over it. Tommy Atha led the charge and, and helped bring him down. I think that was supposed to be an option, but he just elected very early to hang on to the ball and cost him about a yard of – he's going to bring up second down and 11. But like Dawson Williams of Darlington was also in on that tackle. Second down and 11 yards to go for Kusa. 38 seconds left on the clock here in the opening quarter. 7 to nothing, Darlington, if you're just tuning in and joining us. We appreciate you listening to Darlington High School football on WLAQAM 1410. Super glad to be here and bringing it to you tonight. Three wide receiver set, shotgun formation, Hodge in the backfield. Pledger takes a snap, rolling out to his right, looking to pass. He's got company from Tate Ratledge. The play's whistled dead. Must be a procedure call. More than likely going to be a false start, and it is. So this will bring up second and 17. 16. 16. 16. Yeah. Hard to believe that college football will be kicking off next weekend. There's some games tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Jacksonville State plays tomorrow. And Wyoming they? plays somebody. I don't remember who they play, but FCS schools mostly. And then uh, does Georgia, they play App State next weekend, don't they? And then Georgia Tech will be playing Alcorn State. Cusa gets ready to line up with a second and 16. Actually, we're going to have the end of the first quarter before that takes place. So we're going to go ahead and take a one-minute break. Darlington 7, Cusa 0. Cusa with a second down and 15 coming back. When we resume, going the other way, we'll be back in one minute. I'd like to
back live at Branch Bragg Field, and we're getting ready for the start of the second quarter. Darlington up seven to nothing over the Coosa Eagles here at Eagle Stadium, and a, a pretty fun first quarter, close quarter to start the game. Darlington had great field position, only scored that one time. And now Kusa in the midst of their really only effective drive they've had throughout the game so far. And we'll see how they start the second quarter. Well, it really felt like Darlington dominated most of the first quarter, but they're only up 7 nothing. You know, Kusa just very fortunate in, in a good spot if they can uh, continue this drive. But they got a second down and 15 coming up. They've got the ball on the Darlington 44 to start the quarter. Logan Pledger lines him up in shotgun. He's got Jalen Hodge blocking for him. He's got company, and he's going to be sacked behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about four or five yards. Well, Luke Lewis led the uh, rushers in there, number 54 coming in uh, from that three technique he was playing over there and just uh, blew that play up, never had a chance. Third and about, what, 20 now? Yep. Uh, well, that says 18 on 18. the scoreboard, so close enough. But 48-yard line is where they're lining up on Darlington's side of the field. Shotgun formation, big play coming up here. They did convert on a third down and long in a previous series. So here's Kusa trying to keep this drive going and see if they can find their well, way Darling towards the end zone. Darlington wants desperately to stop it here. It's a... Uh, Pick up third down right here. I mean, first down here on this long third down is just the snap devastating to a defense. Quick pass on the inside. They're going to get it to Keenan Dixon. He breaks a couple of tackles, but he's running the opposite direction. You want to go in as the Darlington Tigers swarm around him, and he breaks free, stays up. The 40, the 30, the 25, 20. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? He's in the end zone, and the Coosa Eagles thought they scored, but there's a flag on is the field. Is there a flag? I was looking for one. This one's coming back. There must have been a hold or a block in the back or something. Well, where they're standing, where that flag is, that's going to bring it way back. So uh, they're going to be about where they where they started out. It'll be third down, maybe maybe a 19 this time. That would have been a 48-yard play when all things would have been said and done. But it, like we talked about, this one looks to be coming back. Right now, one of the officials is talking with Todd Wheeler and kind of giving him a conference on what just occurred and explaining the situation. That would have been huge for the Coosa Eagles, no doubt. Well, that was uh, if, if that were to stand, that would definitely be highlight stuff. Did he signal? Is that a blindside block he signaled? Yeah, right now, Todd Wheeler's <laughs> protesting a little bit. Blocking the back, they see. This one, again, is coming back. And well, he came so. over here to his right, and about three people missed a tackle over here. Somebody had him by a piece of uh, cloth there, and he finally tore loose from that and took off running back to his left over there, and he ran about 250 yards to get down to the goal line. And, you know, you were talking about it at the beginning of the game. That just shows you how dangerous his legs are. You really got to keep that guy in front of you at all times. Yes, you better wrap him up. Yeah. 10.45 left first half. We thought that Kusa was about to tie up the game, but a block in the back will bring this one back, and now they're going to have the ball on their own 45-yard line with a third and 24 coming up. And the Eagles call timeout, and so will we. 7 to nothing. Darlington over Kusa. 10.45 left first half. We'll be back in 30. Thanks. Back at Branch Bragg Field, Todd Wheeler is still out there pleading his case to three of the officials. At I the think end of he the day. called that timeout just so he could remonstrate <laughs> with those officials. I think because there's a lot of gesturing and uh, he looks very red faced from here. He's not happy with that. He's not, and I mean that was a. a Truthfully, a really, I didn't see it. Did, did you see it? I didn't see the. I didn't. But the back. you know, the, the bottom line is we don't have the luxury of instant replay. So True. I mean, it, it'd be pretty easy to miss it. So I, I don't know, but you know, like you say, Ty Wheeler, he is thoroughly convinced that that was not the correct call to make in that situation. 
And now he's just kind of shaking his head and walking off the sidelines. But, you know, sometimes when you see your coach get fired up and have your back like that, sometimes it can kind of inspire you. So we'll see what happens on this next play. This is third down and 24. So Kuz is going to have to really come up with a big play here and at the very least put them in a little bit better situation in terms of not giving good field position to Darlington. There's a pass out to the left side of the formation, the far side. He's going to be swallowed up pretty quickly after making the catch. The wide receiver is, and they might gain four or five yards, but they're going to have to punt it away. Well, they did a good job of wrapping him up. He caught it on the outside near the sideline and then tried to turn in back to the middle. But uh, uh, Cade Brock just grabbed him right away and rode him down. So Eddie, a promising drive that began with 3.59 left in the first quarter, extended all the way to the 10, almost 10-minute 10 mark here of our second quarter is going to come away with no points for Coosa. That's got to be very frustrating. And every Coosa fan and member of the football team here thinks they were just robbed on that uh, spectacular run. Keenan Dixon there. drops the snap. He's got company. He's going to have to try to get it away. He finally does. Wow. He is so elusive. It is unbelievable. Nice play. Not a bad, not, not a terrible punt. I mean, they really just dodged a bullet right there. Helped by a nice uh, bounce back to back to him, but uh, still kept his head. And I, I'm amazed he got that punt off. I mean, how many times have you seen a young man kind of panic in that situation and end up, you know, being tackled for a huge loss or worse yet, drop the ball and have it picked up and ran the other way. Yes, that's exactly. Uh, how many times have you seen grown men in the NFL panic in that <laughs> exactly. kind of situation? <laughs> well, Darlington will line up now back on offense, leading the game seven to nothing. Tommy Atha goes in motion off to the right wing. He lines up in tight end position. They're gonna hand it off and go Colin Rogers. He'll muscle forward for about two or three yards. Not a huge pickup there on first down. Well, Colin just running off tackle to the right-hand side of the offensive line and uh, just hard running, but uh, Kusa had that one red and, and it picks up a yard, a hard one yard. Well, Darlington gets set to line up second down and nine. They will line up in shotgun formation with a wide receiver to the near side, one to the far side. They're working right to left tonight here in this court. Stay tuned at halftime. We'll relay to you as many scores as we can round up. Of course, we still got nine minutes until we get to that point. There's a snap. They go back to Rogers this time, see if they can soften up that defensive line a little bit and find him a lane. And he got two or three yards on second down. Yeah, I think that was closer to about five yards that time. Not a bad run. Bring up third down and five. We got 8.40 left first, or first half, seven to nothing Darlington. Coming to, from the right of the backfield, or the left of the back, quarterback's left in the backfield over to the right-hand side of the line. Darlington makes a few substitutions for this next package, and they are ready to go for third and five. Shotgun formation, they're going to have Roth Wilcox here on the near side wide, and then two wide receivers off to the far side. A couple of them are in the slot. One goes in motion. That's going to be Gil Mauer. There's the snap. They're looking downfield, and it's intercepted by Kusa. He's going to score. That's Gavin Hughes. He's at the 10, the 5. Ladies and gentlemen, Kusa strikes back, and pending PAT, we could have a, of course, a tie game. And where was that from? About the 20, I don't know, about 30-yard right line? Right about the 30-yard line, I think. Again, Gavin Hughes comes up big here for the Coosa Eagles. That is a rare interception thrown by Griffin Brewster. Yeah, he was uh, the throw was not a bad throw. He just didn't see that man who was sitting in the in the middle of the formation that time. Just didn't see him, and he just got up there and, and got the ball. And nobody in front of him, nobody had a chance of catching him. So a pick six with 8:01 left here in the first half, and we will wait for the kicker to come out, Noel Pies, and see if he can get it through the uprights, and this would tie up our ball game seven apiece, and it is blocked. And so it is in favor of the Darlington Tigers, seven to six. Seven to six, just a lot of penetration after, right there in the middle of that line as, as if they didn't even try to block. He just came un, seemed to be coming un, unimpeded over there. Well, interesting turn of events as Gavin Hughes picks off a Griffin Brewster pass, ran it back 
30 yards for an interception pick six and now we got a seven to six ball game after the PAT is missed well all this uh, all that we've had and all all the uh, field position that Darlington's had and as much trouble as Coos has been in in third and 25 and uh, it's all almost tied it up right there they're just down by a point Pretty interesting first half, and now we will have the Coosa Eagles tee it up and kick it off to the Darlington Tigers offense. Well, Feels like they were just out there. Yeah, they've re-energized uh, this uh, Coosa, the Coosa sidelines and the Coosa fans over here. And by the way, if you're wondering what kind of crowd we have here tonight at Branch Bragg Field, I'd say it's pretty darn good. They got a lot of folks out here tonight filling the Coosa side, and on the opposite side, the Darlington fans have traveled well, so we've got a fun atmosphere here tonight for high school football. Yeah, that's a big big crowd for Darlington over there. So here comes the kickoff from Coosa's Pies, as we mentioned earlier, and the kick is going to be caught at around the 25-yard line. I think that was Gil Maurer made that fair catch. Kickoff is so with 801 left in the first half, seven to six, Darlington leads by an extra point. And the way things, and we pointed this out, the way things went in the first quarter, at one point I looked at the scoreboard and couldn't believe it didn't say 21 to nothing, Darlington. I agree with you. That's uh, you let a team hang around like this, even if you're a better team. I'm not saying Darlington's a better team, but. You don't want to let a team hang around like Darlington's letting Kusa hang around. First and 10 from the 25. They go to the big man. Rogers finds a seam, goes out to the right side, picks up about 12 yards on first down. Runs off tackle out to the right-hand side. Excellent blocking there on the line and just gets into the secondary and got a little bit of blocking there, but he just runs and refuses to go down. A nice run, nice game, first down for Darlington. And that was his best run of the game. Coos's defense has done a pretty good job on him, kind of bottling him up, and finally he was able to break loose and pick up a big run. And if they can get that type of running game going, that's really going to open some things up for the Tigers. Shotgun formation, first and 10 from the 35. They're going to hand it off and go off to the right side again. And that was Rogers. He picked up about eight yards. Same play off to the uh, off to the side, coming from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side, off tackle out there. Tusa uh, was in a 4-4 earlier in the game, and now they've gone to that 5-2 or a 3-4. That was a six-yard game, actually. Um, that uh -oh. fumble balls on the turf after the handoff to Demetrius Rogers. Second time of the game that we've seen a fumble. One for Cusa, which was recovered by Cusa, and now one for Darlington. Darlington was able to fall on it and get it. Well, that's two weeks in a row with fumbles by Darlington, and uh, not what you want. It's going to bring up third and about 14, 13 to 14. Griffin Brewster did well to fall on that one. He really did. Third and 14 coming up here for Darlington from the Darlington 34-yard line. We've got 6.35 remaining here in the first half. Darlington up 7-6. to six. They're going to send two wide receivers to the far side, two to the near, working right to left. Empty backfield here for Brewster. Man goes in motion. That's Rodgers. we got a timeout. So we're going to do the same thing. Todd Wheeler calls timeout for the Coosa Eagles. Again, 7-6, to six, Darlington over Coosa, 6.24 left. First half will be back in 30. Thanks. Six twenty-four. First half. All right, I got a score update that I'll pass along the line here in case you're wondering what's happening with the Sonorable model game. Right now, Sonorable's on top seven to nothing. And of course, model last week, they played a hard fought game up at Lafayette, came up short. I think it was 28 to 25, the final score in that game. And so, you know, last year had a really, really tough season. I think they won one game throughout the year. And this year, trying to get things back on track under Ricky Ross, their new head coach. and. So far, they've kind of struggled a little bit out of the gate. But. Well, I think Ricky Ross is a really good coach, and I don't look for that 
to last long. They've gone to a new offense this year. They've run in the single wing as uh, you run like by that, Rick Darlington you? in the pocket. And you know I'm a big single wing fan. <laughs> and but and also Ricky Ross is a good coach. And I don't I look for them to improve as they go. Shotgun formation for Darlington, big time, third and 14 coming up. Brewster is in the pocket, going to put the pass in the air. He's wide open, connects with his wide receiver, Ralph Wilcox. He's got one man to beat. The ball is loose on the turf. Kusa picks it up, and that's going to turn out to be a turnover. Oh, my goodness. Man, beautiful pass, beautiful route, uh, route right down the middle. Caught it and uh, just dropped it as he was going down to the ground. I thought he might have. The ground might have caused it, but obviously not. So what looked like was going to be a pass that would get you down inside the <laughs> 10 ends up turning into a turnover, and Kusa is going to have the ball back. They're going to have the ball at their own 11, so they kind of got to get themselves away from their own end zone a little bit. But, man, that was a, a definitely a gift for the Kusa Eagles. Very un-Darlington-like game. Uh, two, two fumbles already. They got one of them back and lost this one. So a fumble with 6-11 left in the half gives the ball back to Kusa. They're back on offense just like that. Shotgun formation. They're going to hand it off and go with Jalen Hodge. Hodge a little bit of a seam and gets about three or four yards, but really that was all after contact. They were on him, uh, but he just kept on going. He may have got more than I thought he did. Well, they were going to mark it down uh, with about a five-yard gain, and he ended up got a couple more, going to be about a six- or seven-yard gain. Goodness, that kid has got some seriously strong legs, and, and talk about effort. Better wrap him up. Jalen Hodge, he is a senior this year. He's one of those players that every game that goes by, you already start to miss him a little bit more because you know that this is the last year you're going to have him. But if you're playing against him, he's scary. He really is. Not a pleasant side over there for an opponent. Two wide receivers to the far side. They're going to hand it off and try to go up the middle. But the middle is pretty clogged. He picks up about a yard or two. So that sets up a third and oh, actually one yard to go here for Kusa. Actually less than a yard, about a foot to go, I'd say. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Actually, they may have to come out and measure this one where he's got that yep. ball right now. They're looking at it pretty hard. I believe they are. No, nope. first down they're calling. First down. So a first down for the Eagles, and it was all Jalen Hodge on those previous couple of plays. Hard running, paying off. And in this game, you know, we're getting a pretty good dose of both the run and pass from, from both teams. Of course, obviously, Darlington passes a little bit more than, than Kusa does, but Logan Pletcher's got a pretty good arm, and he's got some guys that he feels comfortable throwing it to, so we'll, we'll see what he does. Yeah, well, Gavin Hughes has come into the backfield. There's now. a quick screen pass out to the far side in the flat, and he's able to connect with his wide receiver Terry Curry but not a lot there he picked up about two yards on the play well that was a nasty little stop and go move he made out there after he caught it I thought they were going to get him behind the line but he managed to turn it into a two yard game so second and eight for the Coosa Eagles who ended up with the ball after a fumble on a pass that was going to get the Darlington Tigers inside the 10 yard line Gavin Hughes is still out there at the running back for Kusa. Logan Pledger, their quarterback, a senior this year. They had three seniors that graduated last year from the offensive line, so they got a lot of new guys up there, but they're holding their own against a really talented Darlington team. There's the snap. They're going to fake the handoff, put the ball in the air. It's got some pretty big air under it, but the wide receiver, Keenan Dixon, couldn't catch up with it. Kusa fans wanted a flag. Todd Wheeler threw his I hat. Think that's going to be a yep. I think that's going to be unsportsmanlike on Kusa. He is not liking the officiating in this game one bit, and he's letting it be known. He is just really going after him. Well, the Kusa player was. Uh, they were hand fighting down there, and the Kusa player was uh, just as guilty of it as the Darlington player. So that penalty, uh, again, like you say, is going to go against the Coosa Eagles. And it's a dead ball foul, so the, they lose the down, too. 344 remains in our opening half. It's been an eventful one, <laughs> no question about it. 
Seven to six, Darlington leads by <laughs> one point. They lead it by an extra point as they march off the penalty, bringing the Coosa Eagles all the way back to their own 12-yard line, which is where they started, essentially. It should be third down. They've still got it second down up on the... There he goes. He, the uh, official yeah. just signaled for him to change it. Shotgun formation, two wide on each side of the formation. Gavin Hughes in the backfield with Logan Pledger flanked to his right. Quarterback's rolling out, looking to throw up the middle of the field. A screen pass. He connects with Hughes, who came out of the backfield. They get it down to the 22-yard line, and that's going to get them into a third down and nine situation. Fourth and nine. Or fourth and nine, excuse me. You're right. Well, they'll have to punt it away. Every offensive drive of this game has ended in a punt for the Coosa Eagles. Their score came on the interception return for a touchdown from Gavin Hughes with 801 left in the half. And Darlington's had two drives stopped by uh, turnovers, one an interception and the other a fumble. Keenan Dixon sent the punt it away here for the Coosa Eagles. Demetrius Rogers and Casey Gunn back to return the punt. The kick is off and it's going towards Gunn. He is going to bring it out. He's at the 50 and there's a flag that comes in. He rolls back around to the right side, tries to cut it up the field and he's brought down at around the 47 yard line on Darlington's side of the field. But we do have a flag down over here. Yeah, down at the 30, uh, 44 yard line and that's just a, a typical mistake by a high school guy. He had some yards if he'd kept going straight, but he stopped tried to run out wide and uh, loses a, a, a whole lot of yards and I don't, I don't know if they're going to tack 10 yards on to it. Yep, they are. So he not only uh, lost, loses 10 yards on the penalty, he lost about 15 yards by trying to run it to the side over there instead of going straight ahead. So the ball is going to be on the 36-yard line on Darlington side of the field with 237, so they still have some time to work with and I'm pretty sure Kusa, I'm pretty sure Darlington hadn't taken a timeout yet. Don't nope, they haven't. So Darlington will line up on the 36 yard line, ready to go. Shotgun formation, two wide near side, one far side. Brewster taking the snap, fakes the hand off to Rogers, is gonna run, he goes off to the right side. The formation stays up. He's going down the sidelines to 35, the 30, 25, 20. Breaks a tackle, gets inside the 15. What a heck of a piece of running from Griffin Brewster. Wow, look at those wheels. He just fakes the, the give off tackle and just keeps it and rolls out to the side, out to his right out there, and just gets out there and gets, uh, gets a step and just outruns everybody. As I said, what a set of wheels. Nice, nice run. Was that about a 48-yard run? I think so. Shotgun formation, two wide near side, one far side. There's the snap. They go to Colin Rogers, and he gets into the, inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, so a good run to open up the set. Man, what a great run from Griffin Brewster. Just out of nowhere, yeah. not expecting that. We've seen him run the ball and run it well, but uh, he just outran people against a fast Coosa team. He just out. Just out random that time. I love the variety that you get with this Darlington offense. Shotgun formation, second down. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Rogers. Muscles down to about the five yard line. And I think you may have gotten it inside the five. They'll probably line him up about the four. And they're stopping the clock. I don't know if they're going to look at this. Carry good for a Tigers first down. That'll bring up. First down, First down, Darlington, yeah. So I tell you, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, 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 our quarterback went down on the 15. I'm sorry. Spit it out, Eddie. I'm sorry. Griffin Brewster went down on the 15 because you're able to get a, a first down at about the five-yard line instead of going on down to the nine or eight-yard line, and then you got – First and goal and a long way to go. Everybody in tight. They're going to hand it off to Colin Rogers, see what they can get. And really not a ton there. He gets maybe a yard or two, a little bit closer to the goal line. That brings up second down. Well, they've really worked on the middle there, and that was just right up the middle again, coming from the left side of the formation uh, over to the guard on the right side of the line. And uh, Kusa giving them nothing. Of course, time is starting to be a factor. we got less than a minute. 
clock ticking. And and Darlington's got plenty of timeouts. But they don't need to be wasting time here. Power set. Here comes the snap to Griffin Brewster with everybody in tight except for a couple wide receivers. He'll tuck, he'll run, he'll dive towards the end zone. Did he get in? I think he may have been stuffed a little bit short. Yep. They better call timeout, Tommy. 32 seconds left here in the first half. Third down coming up and goal with the ball right at the doorstep. And the clock ticking. 25 seconds. He will finally call the timeout. Nope, 20 seconds. Clock still ticking. And now they'll get ready to go back to the line of scrimmage. And did they call the timeout? Yep, there it is. All right. They're letting the clock run down. I don't really understand that, but letting the clock run down. I'll tell you what, we're almost at halftime, so we're going to keep it right here. Very eventful first half we've had. Darlington's up 7-6. to six. It's been really wild. We've seen some interesting penalties called in the first half. We've seen the ball put on the turf by both teams. And we've had a little bit of everything throughout this football game. Some disputed calls. Yes, it's been a very tense first half, no question about it. But it's it's been a lot of fun to watch this football game. Not the prettiest game that you've ever seen, but nonetheless competitive. And these two teams are getting after it. That was a word I was about to use. Competitive. It's been a <laughs> it has competitive been. first half. And I mean that's what you want to see. So we're glad that you're with us tonight. We're going to hear the band at halftime, as we were told at the beginning of the game. The Coosa Eagles marching band, they call it the greatest marching band in Dixie, and they, they really do do a fantastic job. So I, it just would not be Friday nights unless we were entertained by the marching band at halftime. So really excited about that coming up in just a little bit. But the Coosa Eagles will try to plug the holes and stop the Darlington Tigers right on the doorstep here in just a couple of moments. Third down and goal. Darlington still got two timeouts, 11.1 seconds, and about a half yard to get the to get into the end zone. Coosa is masked up right there in the middle. They're going to line up. It looks like in that power set. Quarterbacks under center, Griffin Brewster, and you've got Colin Rogers in the backfield. Quarterback's going to keep it, dive I forward. I think in, he yep. got in. That's going to be a one-yard touchdown. Griffin Brewster. <laughs> Puts the exclamation point on a great drive, which really he was in charge of running the football, and Darlington's going to increase their lead. Well, it's fitting that he scored the touchdown on that after that great long run that he made. And uh, this is big for Darlington to uh, get these points, and we've got, what, four seconds left in the half. Uh, Griffin Brewster's, I think it was a close to 60-yard run. I, I didn't get catch the math on that to set up that one-yard play on a goal line stand. Here's Little on to kick the extra point. It is up, and it is good, and Darlington is now up 14-6. to six. He's that kicking was, much better this week than he was last week, and that was just right through the middle, up high, good, good height. Maybe a little first game jitters. I know everybody's got some rust to kind of – to get off there in that in that first game, but Darlington, um, of course, made some mistakes in this game. But right now they're on top, 14 to six, and we got four seconds left here in the first half. And and that was a big score to go up, you know, 14 to six, right as you get ready to go to the halftime. Especially considering they get the ball to start the second half too. Indeed, and you know, last weekend they had trailed midway through the second quarter, and then of course right at the end of that first half, Darlington kicked the field goal. They were up by three points. And then it was all Darlington from there. So, even well, though I it, know for Darlington, they're hoping the same thing happens yeah. this week. Even though this feels like an entirely different game in a lot of respects, that part of it kind of feels very familiar, doesn't it? High school football tonight on WLAQ. Super glad you are with us because I think I can sp speak for the both of us when I say very glad to be here with you. It's been fun. I've enjoyed being with you, Matt. These what about five games in a row we've yep. done from last year to this year. We've had an absolute ball. We've we've gotten spoiled. We've seen some really really good football. Of course, I guess that's what you get when you get to see teams like the Darlington Tigers, Coosa Eagles, Pepperell Dragons. Even though that one didn't turn out exactly as close, so that is going to be a short kick as they're just trying to get it um, out of reach of the Coosa Eagles and avoid any kind of returns or anything and just. Let the half end. I suspect they'll make them kick that again. Take over first and 10 from their own 35. Yeah, just try. No, they're to. gonna put it on 35. I guess I. 
not much point putting it there. It's going to be very difficult to score with, with four, four seconds. seconds left. So Kusa will get it on their own four-yard line, as you mentioned, with four seconds to work with. This is their sixth drive of the first half. Each team had six possessions. One time at Pepperell years ago, right before the end of the half, this was 06, I think, or 05, Darlington was trying to kick off and kicked it out of bounds like that, and Pepperell kept putting them back, and they moved them back three times in a row. The kicker kicked it out of bounds, and Pepperell ended up getting the ball and scoring right before the half. Wild things can happen. We'll see. Four seconds left, and here's the snap to Logan Pledger. He's going to drop back and just run the football, and he keeps the play alive. No, he's still behind the line of scrimmage. He looks like he's going to try to put it in the air. He gets hit. Flag comes out. He's out Roderick blown it dead. And that is going to be the end of the first half with a little bit more drama before we go to the halftime period. And they're still out on the field, so the officials are having a little bit of conference here. Not sure what the penalty is. So I presume they'll put a couple of seconds back on the clock as the whistle. Or have an untimed down, perhaps. Officials still having their meeting of the minds right around the 35-yard line inside the near hash. 14-6 to six, Darlington over Coosa as we are almost at halftime, but we'll see what happens once they have everything sorted out. Official gets ready to lean down to pick up the flag, and they break up the conference, and here's the call, Eddie. That is intentionally grounding, or... Yeah. Oh, there's. Did he say right? Oh. I think it's offsetting. Yeah, it. So illegal forward pass. And that's it. So that's the end of the first half. And a game like this, you couldn't just have the end of the first no, half. You had to have some you major have to have drama. Some controversy. Who's the people still not happy? No, no, no. Well. And the refs have done nothing to make them feel any better. 14-6, to 6, Darlington leads at halftime. We're going to send it back to the studio for a few minutes, give us an opportunity to catch our breath and also catch up on some of the other action going on around the area. If you're listening to Darlington Football on WLAQ, again, Darlington 14, Coosa 6. It's halftime. We'll be back in a little bit. Thanks.
Yes, sir, we certainly are, and we're being entertained right now by the Coosa Eagles marching band doing an absolute outstanding job tonight. Really enjoying that. It really is. It's quite spectacular the way they had those, they had those flag twirlers out there spread out like that and those big blue flags. I don't usually look at the band too much, but they're doing a good job. Definitely captivated our attention here for a few minutes, but now we're going back to talking football. Very interesting first half with tons of drama. 14 to 6 is your halftime score. We'll run down the scoring real quick and then kind of talk over what happened in more detail about what happened in the half. Kusa had the ball first as Darlington won the toss. They deferred the second half, so that's an important factor there. Darlington will have the ball to start the second half, but Kusa started off, had to punt on their first drive, went three and out. Darlington got the ball. They scored on a trick play, the first play from the line of scrimmage, a 28-yard pass play from Barrett Wade to Wilcox at, with 10.32 left in the first quarter, and then... You had Kusa have to punt a couple of times. You had Darlington punt a couple of times in that first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, Darlington was up by a score of seven to nothing. Then when we got into the second quarter, Gavin Hughes would intercept a pass, a pick six for the Kusa Eagles. They would score. The PAT was missed at that point with 8.01 left in the first half. It was 7-6 to six in favor of Darlington. We wouldn't have another score again until much later on in the half. So far in the half, there was four seconds left in a one-yard run from the quarterback Griffin Brewster of Darlington, and the PAT was good. would put Darlington ahead 14-6. And so that was the scoring in the first half, but there were a lot of penalties. There were turnovers, uh, fumbles that weren't turned over. I mean, everything that you could imagine that could have happened in that first half did happen. Yes, I, I think it did. And I can tell you a lot of things I don't know, but I know who the unhappiest coach in the state of Georgia is right now, and that's Todd Wheeler because he did not like those calls. As a matter of fact, I can see the locker room over there, and there's still steam coming out in the locker room, and I'm sure that's in between Todd Wheeler's ears. Definitely. We saw a couple of pass interference calls in that first half, and one in particular he was not too excited about, and a couple other things happened as well. And so, like I say, just a really, really dramatic, intense first half of football, which honestly, with some of the other matchups that we've seen from Kusa and Darlington in recent years, you kind of expected that some of those types of things would happen because, you know, let's face it, Darlington and the other schools around the area, they have a tendency to really want to get after it, and there's always a lot of, um, of intense emotion in those games. Well, that's what makes these in-county rivalries so so special and so good is the, just the intense desire by each team and each group of fans to win this game. No question about it. And, of course, obviously after this week, Darlington will play their first home game of the season. That's going to be against Sonoraville. And we know that Steve Conrad is more than likely listening to the broadcast tonight. We just want to say hello to him and welcome him back. I got a text message from him earlier today. And he said that he was really excited about listening to the game tonight, but he was even more excited about kicking me to the curb next weekend <laughs> and getting back in the booth. And I got to tell you, man, we're just as excited as you are. We're really thrilled to have you back, Steve, and glad things are, are going well for you, buddy. And we look forward to hearing you say, buckle your chin straps, Darlington fans. It's time for Toe to Meet Leather coming up next weekend. Well, uh, I know he and he has no sympathy for you at all, does he? Does he? <laughs> no, not he at won't all. Don't even discuss staying out another week. To let you call this Norville game. He's he's chomping at the bit, and we're uh, we'll be glad to have him back. We've missed him a lot. And I have to say, as much as I've enjoyed calling these Darlington games at the end of last year and at the beginning of this year, we wouldn't have it any other way. We are super excited about the triumphant return of Coach Conrad coming up next weekend. So just wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to say hello to you. Well, I tell you what, man, we're going to send it back to the studio again for another break, and we'll continue to catch our breath because I think we're going to need a lot of it coming up in the second half. I expect we're going to have a pretty intense uh, finish to this game. Well, the second half's got a long way to go to match the first <laughs> half, doesn't it? It really if does. If it is, I don't know if you and I will be able to stand it. I know it. What you mean I, I tell you what it's it's a good thing because i live out here uh, close to coosa i don't live quite out in coosa but i live about five minutes from the school so i'm just glad that i got a short ride home i was a little bit longer last weekend from lindale this is kind of your ancestral homeland out here home of uh randy and sandy davis I, that's right my dad went to school here my mom actually went to model where she was the homecoming queen and my dad was an honor graduate they were honored that they finally got rid of him basically <laughs> they were honored he then and, and those aren't my words those are his words but 
Much later on, obviously, he became a legend and had tremendous success, and now they've got a picture in the hallway of him as a shining eagle, and it's not a mugshot. So we're all <laughs> super glad about that. But anyway, super glad to be out here at Coosa High School. Always a lot of fun. We enjoy being at the school, and, of course, everybody treats us extremely well. Todd Wheeler's always nice about letting us come out here. And, of course, Doug Cannon, who's over there doing the PA now, known him for years, and he's always super nice to us as well. So it's a great community out here, and we're always glad to be out here. 14-6, to Darlington leads at halftime over the Coosa Eagles. 11.30 remains until we have the end of the halftime period. We're going to send it back to the studio for more halftime time action and a break and we'll be back in just a little bit thanks Hey, Dad. Dad. Can you hear me? I don't think he can hear me. I can hear him, though. That's odd. Hey, Big Kahuna.
Yeah, we are getting ready for the second half. Still got about six minutes left of halftime. Then we'll have the three-minute mandatory warm-up period put back on the clock. So we still got a little ways to go. But, of course, do want to mention a, a couple of things tonight after the game. We want you to stay tuned for the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. And, of course, you know, last week Griffin Brewster had an excellent game. And we had a lot of guys that had an ex excellent game. It went to Tommy Atha, and he had a pick six and, and, and really deserved that prize. Of course, a lot of guys would have deserved it. But so far in this game, I have to say, if I had to pick it at halftime, I'd be leaning towards Griffin Brewster. Well, you have to now. He's uh, thrown the ball well, and that was just a, a fantastic run he made from midfield all the way down to the 15-yard line. That's right. Did have the, the interception that was returned for a touchdown, so that was a tough situation. But, you know, the best players, they have a way of kind of compartmentalizing those things and moving on to the next play, and I think he answered back in a big way, obviously, and showed a lot of resilience and a lot of maturity in that situation, not to let that get inside his head and just kind of move on in the game, and that's what you got to do. Well, if you're going to play quarterback, you got to have a bad memory. That's <laughs> right. Once it happens, it's over. There's nothing you can do about it, and you've got to go on. You cannot kick yourself over it. Uh, just, just forget it, and everybody else will. Absolutely. If you do, especially if you do something well. Well, we are at halftime here at Coosa High School, Branch Bragg Field, Eagle Stadium. It is 14-6, Darlington on top at halftime, and we're really looking forward to the second half. And one of the things that the Big Kahuna was doing a few minutes ago was talking about the college football action that we're going to get coming up next week, and it's pretty unbelievable. I mean, you get games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday so that's one of the things I really enjoy about the first weekend of the college football season is that you get it uh, for just about a solid week it feels like that opening weekend yes I plan on park, park parking myself downstairs in my home theater and watching it on the big screen and uh, just uh, vegetating down there now are there any particular games that first weekend that you're you're looking forward to the most no no I got you. Well, I, I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to Michigan and Notre Dame, which is going to be taking place the first Saturday of the college football season. That will be on NBC at 730, and obviously that's just a legendary matchup that you want to see. There's some intrigue in the Miami LSU game, Virginia Tech playing Florida State. You got Louisville and Alabama, so some, some pretty interesting games. I, I would say when I look at the matchups, for the first weekend of the college football season, I think we've had some years in recent times where they were kind of, um, you know, bigger matchups and whatnot than we've got this time. There's a couple big ones in there that, that'll be a lot of fun to check out. Well, Miami LSU is a, is a really an interesting thing. We're going to see how those programs stand, how Ed Orgeron is doing at uh, LSU and how Mark Richt is, is doing at Miami. I think that'll just, uh, one, one team's going to come away feeling good about themselves and one team's going to look for a struggle maybe down the road. Well, man, we've got time enough to take one more deep breath before we begin our second half, so we're going to send it back to the studio. We've got three minutes left in the halftime period, then the mandatory three-minute warm-up, so we could take as much of a four-minute break or whatever we need to do. So we'll send it back to the studio, Darlington 14, Coosa 6. We'll be back in just a little bit. Like yes, sir.
Thank you very much, man. And we are at Branch Brat. Thank you very much, Big Kahuna. We are back out at Branch Bragg Field, Coosa Eagle Stadium. We got about 30 seconds until we begin the second half. And I got to tell you, when Todd Wheeler came back out onto the field at halftime, it, it, it didn't look like he'd sorted through his emotions about the officials there in the first half in the locker room. He still looked pretty upset when he came back out here. And he does. I, I still see some steam rising from around those headphones. I wonder what he said in there. <laughs> I can only imagine. He's a he's a classy man, but even the classiest man under that kind of stress, there's no telling what you could say. But we'll never know. 14-6, to 6, Darlington up over Coosa, and halftime is now officially over. Darlington, they won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. So not only do they have the lead, they get the ball to start the second half. And, Eddie, you pointed out something kind of interesting when we were talking in the break, but Darlington scored on their first play, and they scored on their last play of the first half, and that was the only scoring they'd pick up there in the first half. Pretty crazy. Well, we'll just see what will happen in the second half. Here's the kick from Pies, and it's going to be brought in at about the 20-yard line. He's got a head full of steam, but he's going to be stopped pretty quick before he got real good and going. That was Luke McDermott, and he runs hard, doesn't he? Yeah, yep. Of course, that is one of the things that you can say about the Darlington Tigers. You'll be hard-pressed to find another team that's as disciplined and plays as hard as they do. Yeah, although we've seen a little breakdown in discipline, two turnovers in the first half. 11.52 remains here in our second half. We're just entering the third quarter. Darlington getting set to line up at the 30-yard line on their side of the field to begin our second half. Shotgun formation, wide receiver to the far side, one to the near. In the backfield is Colin Rogers going in motion. It's Casey Gunn. They're going to hand it off and go up the middle, and they're going to find a little bit of room, but not a lot. That would be a pickup of a yard. Well, they were faking a jet sweep and faking a handoff and a lot of misdirection in there, but Kusa didn't buy any of it. There was a lot going on in that play, but like you say, Kusa, they didn't take the bait. They stayed at home and, and made a nice stop there on first down. Darlington back to the line of scrimmage, dialing up a second down and nine play. Wide receiver to the far side, one in the near, working right to left. Man goes in motion, that's Tommy Atha. Here's the snap to Griffin Brewster. He's going to hand it off. They're going to run jet sweep up to the right side with Rodgers, tries to find a hole to turn up the field. There's nothing there, so he's going to be stopped. This is going to be third down and a long eight. Well, we haven't seen much uh, evidence of ability of Darlington to get outside on them. Most of their success runnings come right up the middle or just off tackle. That uh, that sweep there just uh, really was uh, shut down by Kusa. Running off the field is Colin Rogers. Now in the backfield is going to be a different gentleman. I believe that's Rhett McDermott. Looks like in 37. Yep, that's him. Two wide receivers to the far, one on or two on the near. Third down and eight coming up. Brewster ready to take the snap. Oh, he drops it on the turf, picks it back up, turns, throws, makes a great pass over to Tommy Atha, and they almost get a first down. As a matter of fact, I think they did. He bought, I thought he had made a mistake by turning around and going back, but he got around and, and managed to pick up that uh, two yards that he needed after that move that he made. So it's uh, a nice throw by Griffin after a drop like that. Just kept his cool and picked up the ball and made a good throw and Tommy was right there and made a good catch and uh, fought his way to a first down. You know, I, I think I heard him say I, I smell cupcakes because he wants that <laughs> icing on the cake yeah, player of the game from Honeymoon Bakery. Wide receiver to the far side, one to the near. Everybody else is in pretty tight. Demetrius Rogers is in the backfield. They're going to go to him. He goes off tackle to the right side and picks up a big chunk of yards, probably seven. At least six, if not seven. Darlington putting something together early here in the beginning of the second half. They're up 14 to six, 930 left here in the third quarter, and they've got a second down and four coming up here in just a moment. Two wide receiver set. Demetrius Rogers is in the backfield. Looks like you got Tommy Atha at that H back position, unless that's McDermott. 
And here comes the snap to Brewster. Man went in motion. They fake it to the motion man, go off to the right side to Demetrius Rogers. They had me fooled. He was already down the, the field about 10 yards before I, before I figured out he had the ball. Well, that was just a straight give coming his, to his from his left to all tackle on the right-hand side. And uh, Darlington did a good job of blocking that side of the line, and, and Demetrius hit it hard and fast. Ball is now on the 44-yard line on Coosa's side of the field, and so methodically the Darlington Tigers are just moving it down the field. This has been a pretty smooth drive. You did have the one play where Griffin Brewster dropped the snap, but he picked it back up and threw a strike, and it was one of the best plays of the drive so far. Man goes in motion. They're going to fake it to the motion man. They run that same play they did on the previous play. This time, though, they go to Colin Rogers, and he picks up a big chunk of yards. Back here at the middle. Jackson Thomas, as you probably heard over the PA, with a stop for the Coosa Eagles. High school football night on WLAQ tonight after the game. Flip it over to our FM side for Randy Davis and Lenny B on the Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show. Some interesting games going on tonight, of course, since you had some teams play last week in week zero, including Darlington and Coosa. A lot of teams have the, have the night off. they got a bye week right after the first week of the season. Well, Darlington will be off the uh, next week to play Sonoraville, and then they're off the following week. They're off that week, and then they're off the first week of October. And then they... And then it's... After Sonoraville, no more the breaks. Off, yep. They start region play, don't they? Yep. Well, 8.30 remains, third quarter, 14-6. Darlington with the lead. They won the toss to begin the game. Deferred to the second half. This is the first possession of the second half, and Darlington started the drive on their own 30-yard line, and now they've already got it to the Coosa 38. So they are moving the ball early. Wide receiver to the near side is going to be Casey Gunn for this package. Darlington working right to left here on second down and five to go. And here comes the snap from the shotgun. They're going to hand it off to Colin Rogers. Got bumped to the line of scrimmage. Stayed up, but he's going to be tackled for a loss of one or two yards. Man, a lot of penetration on that uh, left side of Darlington's line by Kusa. Uh, there's nowhere to go. They just uh, blew up the blocking on that side. I'll tell you what, man, the, now that the sun is good and down for a solid hour, the temperature's dropped quite a bit, and it feels wonderful out here. Yeah, it feels good. Where else would you rather be on a Friday night <laughs> than watching uh, two good high school football teams? Shotgun formation, two wide on each. I think you know the answer to that. Two wide on each side. Nowhere. Nowhere I'd rather be. Brewster takes a snap, puts it in the air, and that was going to be incomplete and no flag. A little bit of contact, but not enough to throw a flag. It's good coverage by the Coosa Eagles. Well, what are they going to do? Are they going to bring Tate Rattledge in to punt? It looks like it. So Darlington picks up a first down on that drive. Looked like they were really putting something together, but they bring Tate on to punt. Of course, we did see a fake punt earlier in the game. They came up a little short and turned it over on downs, but I think they're just going to kick it away here. I think so. And there's the kick. Get some air under it. Not a real long kick. It drops at about the... 20 takes a nice Darlington bounce and's inside the 10. So that one turned out a lot better than I thought it was when it went off his foot. But well, he just barely kicked it, but he got a nice roll on it. Sort of a rugby style kick without doing it rugby style. Anytime you can pin him inside the 10, you're doing a pretty darn good job. So the score remains 14 to 6 as Kusa gets their first possession. And of course, the punt did not do the Kusa Eagles any favor in terms of field position to start their first drive of the second half. And they need to really put something together here. But it's tough when you got to go 92 yards. Because they're actually lining that thing up close to the eight. Yep. Shotgun formation, two wide near side, one far side. There's the snap. They're going to hand it to Jalen Hodge. He'll try to find something up the middle, but guess what, Eddie? There's wrapped a door yep. in his face. Wrapped him up that time, and then uh, 
Tate Riley's kind of clamped down on his shoulders and that ended his run that time. So a short pickup of not even a yard that brings up second down and a long nine. Dawson Shag Williams in on that tackle. Uh, sent a couple of wide receivers off to the far side this time with two to the near side. One of them's going to be Keenan Dixon, and we talked about him quite a bit throughout the broadcast. He's got fast wheels. You don't want to leave him in space. He's got Casey Gunn covering him. Darlington's defense has been unbelievable the first couple of games of the year. There's the snap. Logan Pledger's going to tuck it and run it, and he goes off to the left side and picks up. I don't. He may have got a yard, but I don't even think he got that much. Just very stout. He took. Uh, Pledger took that ball, tried to run to his left, and uh, Darlington just flooded that side of the line. Got some penetration, made him go back some, and then they get, uh, had that cornerback and safety coming in from that side, and just nowhere for him to run. Very stout looking Dar Darlington is right now. Shotgun formation coming up for third and seven. Obviously a, a pass situation if you're Kusa, of course, pretty tough to pass when you're backed up that close to your end zone as the quarterback and the shotgun standing right around their own five-yard line working left to right. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Jalen Hodges in the backfield. There's a snap. He's rolling out looking to pass. He's got company. Puts it in the air. Pretty good ball. He's wide open and makes the catch. That was number six, Malachi Martin, with a fantastic catch across the 50. And that was the biggest play of the game so far for the Coosa Eagles. That was unreal. Well, Demetrius Rogers just got a little loose in his coverage right there and, and let him get away from him. And he just caught it in stride, lucky to bring him down. He's right on the 50-yard line now. That was a big third down play for Coosa. A 40-yard pass play for the, or actually 48-yard pass play. I said that wrong. 38-yard pass play for the Coosa Eagles. And that keeps the dream alive. They get a first down. They're right at the middle of the field. Shotgun formation, two wide to the far side, one to the near, working left to right. They're going to hand it off to Jalen Hodge, and they're going to close the door on him. He takes a loss of about seven yards. You hold your breath every time Hodge takes the ball and runs out to that side because you're expecting him to run like he did on that play that got called back and just run it all the way down there. But uh, Darlington stayed on him and managed to bring him down that time. You also hold your breath when you look down and you see Tate Ratledge get up after a play yes. coming up a little gimpy. He was kind of favoring his right ankle a little bit, but I think he's okay. Uh, Coosa Eagles got a second down and 16 coming up after a bit pass play that got him at midfield, but the play right after it, they take a loss for six yards. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near shotgun formation. There's a snap to Logan Pledger rolling out, going to put it in the air, puts a lot of air under this one. That one is going to be incomplete, but I got to tell you, that was in danger of being intercepted. Well, it was, and it was in danger of being called offensive interference, too, because uh, uh, he pushed on uh, Casey Gunn as he went up for it. The Coosa player did, but uh, no call. Pass was intended for Keenan Dixon. Incomplete pass brings up third down and 16 from the Coosa 44. They had it at midfield. 421 left here in the third quarter, 14 to 6. Darlington leads. Kusa will try to keep the drive alive with a big play here with four wide receivers on the field. There's a snap rolling out. Obvious pass situation. Ball's in the air, and it's going to be incomplete to Sean Brown. He shook a defender, kind of got tripped up, and the ball was going to be out of reach in any circumstances. Well, that was uh, Cam Watson over there making it difficult for him to get free on that pattern. And uh, just uh, not where the quarterback expected him to be. So fourth down, and it looks like Kusa will punt on their first drive of the second half. So two punts, one for Darlington, and now one for Kusa. Keenan Dixon will punt it away. You've got Casey Gunn and Demetrius Rogers back deep. And we wait on the snap. Here it is, and the kick is going to be fake. It had three guys on him, couldn't get the kick off. He's going to be brought down 
Forward motion stopped around the 25, so Darlington's going to have excellent field position. Yeah, I don't think that was a fake call. I think, I think so they were either. just in there so far. He, he didn't want to kick it and uh, risk getting it loose. And worse, did the only thing he could was to hang on to the ball and uh, take that loss instead of a bigger loss by trying to kick the ball. I think you're right. I, I don't think he ever intended to do anything but kick that ball away, and there were three Darlington Tigers right in his face before he could even make a move to kick it. They just came completely unblocked, didn't it? It looked they like nobody sure even touched them, all three of them. So Darlington gets a gift there. They're going to start on the Coosa 32 with four minutes left in the third quarter, already up by a score of 14-6, to six, and really putting Coosa's defense in another spot, although they perform well in this game considering they've been in this situation a couple of times. Could be a lot worse than it is. Well, they're only giving up 14 points, and they've been in – Put in a lot of trouble all night. Brewster rolling out the pass here on first down. Puts it in the air, and it is inter – nope, almost intercepted. Bounced off the ground, I think. That was that Terry was a, Curry. Yeah, that was uh, the first bad decision I've made, seen uh, Griffin make this year. He comes up a little gimpy. So we're under four minutes to play in the third quarter. Darlington has the ball. First play didn't go as planned, but they'll line up for second down and 10 from the 32-yard line in Coosa territory. At least they live to fight again. Exactly. Oh, and, I mean, how many times over the course of the first couple of games of the year have you seen a bad play like that and they turn around and do something big on the next play or two? Yep. Wide receiver on each side. Casey Gunn is here to the near side on the far side. It's Barrett Wade. There's a snap. They're going to hand it off to Colin Rogers. What did I just say? He gets it down to nice the 22 run. yard line. Nice run. And a big play after a mistake, and they get close to a first down. Well, I, I don't know if that was maybe a midline option like that. It looked like he uh, put it in, was thinking about pulling it back out of Rogers' stomach, but uh, got great. Great yardage on that. It's just a very short third down play now for first down. Here's the snap to Brewster. Takes it, hands it off to – nope. Hands it to Rogers. yes, and I believe he got the first down. Didn't have far to go. It's a good thing because he didn't go very far. No. Pick up about two. That's good for Darlington Tigers first down. So the ball is just shy of the red zone. They got it on the 22-yard line in Coosa territory as we edge towards the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Demetrius Rogers comes in for Colin Rogers. And I'll tell you what, they've got some good running backs on this Darlington team, and I mentioned this earlier, the options you have in terms of the passing and the running. And now the quarterback, we've seen him run some good plays in this game as well, running the ball. So you got a lot of options. That goes to Demetrius Rogers. Breaks free. He gets loose, but we got a flag. I, I think I saw a hold over here back around the 17-yard line, but we'll see what this flag is. Well, there's a flag down about the 17-yard line. That was a great run. Demetrius is just a sophomore. He's going he's gonna to be good. He's going to get better. You know, when you realize that Tajay Watley obviously graduated going to Georgia Tech, he'll get started next week as they get ready to play Alcorn State, you thought, man, that, that's a that's a huge loss. But, man, Demetrius Rogers is a great addition to this team, kind of picking up some of that yardage. Even wearing his old number. Yeah. <clears throat> so that is going to be, I believe, a holding call, and that will bring him back to the 27-yard line. That bring up first and about 17. So first and 17 here for the Darlington Tigers. On Coosa's side of the field with under three minutes to play. This third quarter has gone by, it feels like, pretty quickly. A lot less passing and a lot less strange things than were happening in the first half. Here's the snap. They're going to give it off to Demetrius Rogers. Finds a little bit of a seam and gets it back to the 22-yard line. So he got few of those yards that they lost back, but he comes up real gimpy, hobbling on his right ankle. They're going to have to get him off the field. He's really struggling. I don't know what uh, it didn't look like. I mean, he, he just kind of flipped over. It didn't look like that violent of a hit, but he's uh, he's limping pretty good coming off there. He is, and, and normally if it were a cramp or something like that, he'd be on the ground. So I, I don't think that's what it was. But Is that Frank Manning in at quarterback? I believe it is. I think you're right. I missed Griffin coming out. I did too. So Manning gets ready to take the snap with Rogers in the backfield. Hands it off. He finds a hole. Gets it down in close to the 15-yard line. And so it's going to be third and long here for the Tigers. 
in the red zone. Frank doing a good job carrying out his fakes, doing everything he can to give him a chance to run the ball. We'll see what Brent, Brent Bell dials up here now. Two wide receiver set, Casey Gunn on the near side, Barrett Wade on the far side, and we're going to have a little movement on the line of scrimmage. I think that was on the Darlington. No, no, that was on the Coosa Eagles. No, it was on Darlington. I was right the first time. Fault start. We've seen several of those in this game. Yeah, it'll be assessed against the Tigers for illegal procedure. That'll make it third and 11 now. So third and 11 from the Coosa 22. And as you heard Doug Cannon say on the PA, Coosa needs to stop right here. And they, they do in the worst way. Shotgun formation. Two wide on the far side, one on the near. Here's the snap. Quarterback's going to hang on to the football and run. And he goes off to the – no, he actually handed it off and started running towards the corner of the end zone, and a man ran up the middle, and that was Colin Rogers and picked up a good chunk of yards, got it inside the 15. Well, that's Frank carrying out his fakes, as I said Absolutely. earlier. Absolutely. Hit, hit the nail on the head with that one. Eight, that'll bring up fourth and three. So fourth and three here for the Darlington Tigers, Tigers in the red zone at the 14-yard line as we get really close to the end of the third quarter, and they're going to kick a field goal. Little's going to come on, and we'll this put is going to be 20. a 30-yarder. So here comes the hold. The kick is up, and it looked like he is going to be no good. It was wide oh, left. Oh, wow. I thought that one was good. Kicked it well. It'll be a missed field goal. And the score is going to remain 14-6. to six. So if you're the Coosa Eagles, obviously Darlington started on their own 30-yard line, marched the ball down the field, stalled out in the red zone. If you're Coosa, that was a major victory right there well, on Well, you got to feel pretty good that uh, – Darlington just hasn't been able to do anything, especially in the second half. Just hasn't been able to score much. They've had opportunities, but uh, Kusa has just stiffened up, and those uh, all those seniors on there are just not letting them get loose. So Kusa will get lined up after the missed field goal on their own 20-yard line. Logan Pledger takes a snap, hands it off to Jalen Hodge. Hodge stays up, picks up four or five yards on first down. Almost six, I think. Good, solid five yeah, yards. Up the middle of number two, Jalen Hodge. 21 seconds left yards. on the clock here in the four. third quarter. We're almost to the final 12. That was just a give straight up the middle. Okusa gets ready to dial up a second down and five. Five seconds left on the clock. We'll wait until the fourth quarter to see this next play. So we're going to go ahead and send it back to the studio. Darlington 14, Coosa 6. We'll come back for the final 12 minutes of this one from Branch Bragg Field after a one-minute break. Thank you. Okay, we are back out at Branch Bragg Field, Eagles Stadium right now. The Coosa Eagles are hanging in there. Darlington has had a lot of opportunity in this game to really put this game away, but have come up short and having really good field position throughout the game. And in the second half, they just had a great chance on that drive. Couldn't get it in, stalled out in the red zone, and missed a field goal. So kind of a frustrating start to the half. Well, Coosa's just, just been real stout on defense there, and of course, Griffin Brewster it was out for the last few plays of that, and we we saw him come up limping earlier, and I don't know. Uh, I see him huddle around a player over here on the bench on the other side, and I, I don't know if he's getting treatment or, or, or what, but uh, Frank Manning was in there, and they were a little more reluctant to pass because Frank doesn't have the reps that uh, Griffin has. The Eagles, the Eagles will line up now going right to left to start the fourth quarter. So we swap side of the fields. Man goes in motion. They're going to fake to the motion man. Quarterback is going to run that one all the way. And he picks up. Close about, to the first down. I think he's going to be stopped about a yard short, but you're right. He's, he's really close. I bring up third down and one here for the Coosa Eagles. Pledger on the keeper. 
I tell you what, the effort on both sides of this game has just been unbelievable. There are going to be some tired boys when they this are. game's over now, isn't there? Both teams came in with a lot of energy, and they sustained it throughout. Of course, a little bit easier to do that tonight because the weather is so much better than it was last week. Much cooler, isn't it? It is. Two wide receivers on the near side, one on the far side. Logan Pledger takes the snap on this big play, and actually they got the first down on that last one. So ball was picked up by McDermott, and he was headed the other way, but the whistle was already the, dead, uh, the play was dead. Well, they just, uh, Darlington just, they, did, they tried to come up the middle just over the right guard, Kusa did, and Darlington just stoned them in there, just a very short game. Well, Kusa has the ball on their own 31. They picked up a first down on the previous play, and now it's second down and nine. We got 11 minutes to go here in the ball game with Darlington up 14 to six. Stay tuned after the game for the awarding of the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. Got Cade Brock over the center nose in there in uh, three, four, and he's really been stout up the middle. Four wide receiver set. Logan Pledger puts the ball in the air, and he started to turn and run before he secured the ball. Just yet. Yep. He thought he had it. That was uh, uh, Darlington chose that time to blitz, and uh, the line came free, too. And uh, he got got rid of it in plenty of time, but uh, a little maybe a little hard and went through his hand, a little bit high, but catchable. Speaking of the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game, looking forward to awarding that. Also looking forward to breakfast tomorrow over at Honeymoon Bakery. They've got omelets. They've got a special that they usually have every Saturday, which sometimes is the apple bread French toast. Sometimes they have chocolate chip pancakes, which can't go wrong with either one of those. And then get a box full of goodies to take home for the rest of your Saturday. Shotgun formation, three wide set, two on the near, one on the far. we got a flag. Play, I believe. That'll be a five-yard penalty against the Eagles. Delay a game. <laughs> yeah, the Kusa Eagles, they've, they've really been able to hang in this game, but they hadn't had a lot of breaks either. They hadn't no. had a lot of things go their way. But they're a scrappy, scrappy team with some experience. I think they're going to do well in 7AA this year. I think they'll be one of the teams that will make a run to potentially make the playoffs at the end of the year. If they can keep everybody healthy, they're like a lot of teams. They're kind of thin, but there's the snap. They give it to Gavin Hughes. He flips it up. I think that was going to be a trick play, but that thing came out of there really hard and high and ends up being a turnover. Turnover. Big. I tell you, Darlington has got to score on this uh, turnover here. They're going to start on the 15-yard line. They, they really got to come away with points on here. So oh, they're going to just let Kusa right back into the game. A fumble from the Kusa Eagles to give Darlington a short field. Frank Manning still out there at quarterback. Doing a good job, but definitely concerned to see your starting quarterback, Griffin Brewster, over on the sidelines now. This is going to begin at the 15-yard line. And is Darlington in the red zone to start this series? Frank's a man with a lot of young man with a lot of poise, and of course his older brother was a quarterback for Darlington uh, before Frank got here. Here comes the snap. Man went in motion. There's the handoff. They go to Colin Rogers. He gets tripped up. That was a good shoestring tackle by Gavin Hughes. Well, that was great penetration coming from his uh, linebacker position over there, and just uh, blew that play up because it looked like they had something going over there, and he just came from his outside linebacker position on the left all the way across to the right and tackle him for virtually no gain. Second down and a long nine as Darlington goes back to the drawing board. As you mentioned, Manning at quarterback right now. Frank Manning came in for the injured Griffin Brewster. Don't know the nature of the injury just yet. I don't think it's anything major. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Demetrius Rogers. Runs around the line of scrimmage and towards the end zone. Touchdown but a flag. flag. I don't know what happened. But more than likely, we're going to see this one coming back. We'll wait for the official's call, though. Yeah, that's going to be... Holding against the Darlington Tigers. I don't know about that touchdown. 
So instead of being a 14 yard for a yard run for a touchdown, that's going to be a holding call and a 10 yard penalty. See where they're going to mark it from. They're marking it from five, about from the five yard line. Gonna put it on the 15-yard line, just outside the 15. Second and 11 from the 16. So second and 11 from the 16-yard line as Darlington gets lined up with 9:34 left in the game, leading at 14 to six. This score would go a long way in terms of this game. Yes, it would give the uh, team some uh, little faith in uh, Frank's ability to uh, run this offense too. Shotgun formation. He'll hand it off. Ball gets loose, and I don't know who came up with it. I think Coos has got it. That's going to be a turnover. We'll see when they come up from the pile, but, yep, Coos has got it. Big man Sean Brown fell on the ball, and that will be a turnover. Well, that's somebody didn't hasn't had as many reps as your starter. Just came loose there, and uh, he was right on it. Well, that's that, that one hurts. Darlington continues to let Kusa hang around in here with a slim eight-point lead. They had the ball on the Kusa 15 to start the drive and came away with no points, and that is highly frustrating. I think they're going to have to let Frank throw the ball. They don't seem to be uh, – they seem to be very reluctant to let him throw the ball, but they're going to have to, to – uh, Open that Coosa defense up some. There's a pass to Keenan Dixon from Logan Pledger. He connects, picks up 11 yards on a long pass play, and that is how Coosa will open up this drive. Uh, just a smash route out over, over there to the uh, quarterback's far right-hand side, right on the sideline there. Good, good pass, good catch. First down. And the Darlington Tigers trying to pin their ears back on defense. If Kusa marches down the field and scores on this drive, this is going to be a real interesting finish to this football game. Kusa with the ball, first down and 10 after a good pass play to start the drive. They're going to send two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. They're going right to left. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off, give it to Jalen Hodge, and see what they can get there, and there's not much. He picked up a yard or two at the most. Tate Riley's did a good job of sliding over there and clogging that hole up. Gave him nowhere to go. High school football night on the ridge, 934. You're listening to WLAQAM 1410. Very excited about the Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show coming up tonight and find out what's going on with the other area teams that are playing tonight. I would say it's about a half slate of games, kind of similar to what we had last week. That's kind of the way it goes now in week zero and week one. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. There's the snap on second down. They're going to run it with Jalen Hodge. He's pulled down big time, and a nice stop there by Rhett McDermott. Nice, who just slammed yes, him. Yes, Good nice up tackle. Two, Jalen Hodge tripped up behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about two. That'll bring up third and 11. Third and 11 after the loss of two yards thanks to that tackle by Rhett McDermott. Yep. Got great penetration on the outside, outside of the end there, and uh, just blew that play up. We're going to have four wide receivers on this set, two on each side. In the backfield is Jalen Hodge. Logan Pledger lining them up here for a big third down play. They've had a couple of third down conversions in this game. There's a snap. He's rolling out, going to pass. Ball's in the air. His eyes got too big, and he dropped the interception there, Tommy Atha, but nonetheless broke up the play and forced Well, Kusum yeah, if he could have come down with that when he had another pick six, didn't he? He did. He, I don't, I, he just didn't see Tommy. He saw the receiver out there. And, Tommy was uh, a little short of the play they had. He was bracketed. Tommy was on the short side and had another man on the back side. He didn't see Tommy and, and made the throw and lucky to come away without an interception on that play. So there was the turnover, and it does not end up biting the Darlington Tigers as Kusa ends up having to punt. And now Darlington will get the ball back as we wait for Keenan Dixon to punt it away with Rodgers and Casey Gunn back to attempt to return the kick. And we got a flag on the field. I think it was a false start on Kusa. I believe you're right. So that'll back them up a little bit more and give Darlington a, a better opportunity for some better field position, which field position has not been an issue for Darlington. No, they have certainly had it, and they have certainly squandered some great field position here tonight. 
So here come the Coosa Eagles, and now they're going to be trying to punt away from about 10 yards away from their own end zone, which definitely changes the situation a bit. So two men back. That's Demetrius Rogers and Casey Gunn. Here's Keenan Dixon. Puts it pretty high in the air, but not very far. Demetrius Rogers grabs it at the 48. Pretty good coverage there by the Coosa Eagles. They got down in a hurry. A little bit risky. I thought he would come up and make a fair catch on that, but uh, ball on the 46. This has probably been Darlington's average field position for tonight. I know, and they had great field position last week too. Well, we got. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's cramping, but uh, Sean Brown on the ground there. Yeah, he's cramping. You can see him trying to stretch his leg out. Definitely something that you see a lot of this time of year, but tonight we wouldn't expect to see it quite as much as you would have expected to see it last week, and we didn't really see much of that last week that I remember. I don't remember any cramping, do you? No, nah, not, not really. Should have been some cramping last week. I'm, yeah. su I'm surprised he's cramping here tonight, although it's, it's still warm. It's, it's comfortable to us, but it's still warm down there on the field. And he's up and off the field. We talked about Sean Brown earlier in the broadcast. I was looking him up on 247 Sports and some of the other recruiting sites, and apparently he's verbally committed to Tennessee. He's a three-star recruit, really good player. He's he's going to be one of those guys that when he's not on your roster next year, you're going to notice him not being here. But you're going to enjoy watching him on Saturdays. He's been lined up against Tate Ratledge all night. That's not an easy task. No. I'd probably cramping too. Just the thought of having to try to go up against him. All right, the Coosa Eagles on defense now, lining up against the Darlington Tigers, who have a Blue. real opportunity Is here. Is that Griffin back out there, I think? I don't think. Man, I th Manning's still out there, Okay, man. Yeah, still Frank. Still Frank. So Frank will line them up, shotgun, two wide receivers to the far side, first and ten. Ball is on the 46, good field position. There's a snap. They're going to run it with Rodgers, and he almost got going that time. Is that Gavin Hughes again coming from his outside linebacker position? Yep, Gavin Hughes. Gavin Hughes again penetrating from the left side and coming over to the right side and flowing over there and just bringing Colin Rodgers down. If he doesn't make that tackle, Colin's got some uh, good yards on that play. He really does, and they're going to stop him at the 45, so he picked up a yard, but you're right. Gavin Hughes has stopped some really big plays in this game, that one included. He's a really, really good player. Well, they got him listed as an outside linebacker, but it like he's playing in the middle. Yep, he definitely is. Shotgun, two wide receiver set, working left to right, second down and nine. Here's the snap. They give it to Demetrius Rogers. Still not putting it in the air. They're going to get about two or three yards and have not thrown the ball at all here since Manning's been in the game. Terry Curry with the stop for the Coosa Eagles. That brings up third and six for the Darlington Tigers. But... You know, one of the things that you do see happening on these drives, even though they're not getting much, obviously keeping it on the ground, they're eating up a fair amount of clock. They're down to the 6.36 mark of the game. But things still within reach for the Coosa Eagles, so they need to get a couple of first yep. downs. Plenty of time. A couple of wide receivers now to the near side, one on the far side, shotgun formation. Demetrius Rogers in the backfield. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Rogers. Gets a hole. He's down to the 38. Keeps the wheels turning inside the 30, inside the 20, and that's where he'll be stopped in the red zone. That was a big time. That play. was a nice misdirection play. Almost an 80 draw that Darlington's famous for running, but uh, Frank was rolling out to his right and gave it to Demetrius Rogers oh, below him, Frank. coming to his left, and uh, just fooled Kusa completely for a few seconds. And it looked like they were going to get, he was going to get stopped short of the first down, but then he got loose. And first and 10 for the Darlington Tigers on the Eagles 19 as we resume play, and that was really, really one of the bigger plays of the game. Our buddy Doug Cannon, you hear in the background calling these, the PA system here at Coosa. It's a pretty stout one, isn't it? <laughs> Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. They're going to hand it off to Rodgers. He's got a hole. He's going to be down to close to the 11-yard line, maybe. Once again. Up the middle good for about six yards. That'll bring up 
Second and four. Yep, that was Gavin Hughes again on that tackle, and once again, uh, cutting that, cutting that off and uh, keeping him from getting major yardage on there. He is really playing well out there, just really dominating the middle of that linebacker position over there. So now the ball is going to be on the 14-yard line. Didn't get quite as far in as I thought he did, and they will line up in the shotgun again with. Colin Rogers in the backfield and three wide receivers set, two on the far, one on the near. There's a snap. They're going back. Rogers gets a big hole, and he is in the end zone, diving, kind of tripping in there, but he gets a good run, and the Darlington Tigers score on a 14-yard run for a touchdown from Colin Rogers. Well, Gavin Hughes has stopped that play every time Darlington has tried to run at that time, and I don't know if they blocked him or if he tripped. Uh, but uh, Colin hit that and went right up the middle and uh, right where Gavin Hughes has been stopping him. And at that time, he was unable to and uh, just came a big, big touchdown. Uh, couldn't get much bigger. 20-6 to 6 is your score. Little on to kick the extra point with the hold is going to be Frank Manning, who's in as the backup quarterback. There's the kick. It is up through the uprights, and we've got a 21 to six ball game in favor of the Darlington Tigers. Well, that, that ought to give Frank some confidence. He's a, he's a great kid. I've known him since he was a little boy. He played football for me as a little boy. He's a great kid, got a big heart, and not afraid of anything, and uh, uh, it's good to see him get a chance here. Here's, here's, his, here's your chance, Frank. Of course, we hope Griffin Brewster is not seriously hurt. He still hasn't shown up, and I don't see him over there on the sideline, so I'm not sure what's happened. 5-10 left in the game. 21-6 is your score. Darlington in control of this one at this point. And like you mentioned, Griffin Brewster is injured, and, and right now I'm watching Mark Sean Brown, White. Or, excuse me, Sean Brown walking around the sidelines, kind of being looked at a little bit. He came up a little gimpy earlier in the game for the Coosa Eagles. Is he still on the sidelines trying yep. to walk that cramp off? He sure is. So two men back here for the Coosa Eagles. You're going to have Keenan Dixon and also Sean Brown. And, and Coosa really needs to score very quickly if they're going to have any shot whatsoever at this game. A big return here would go a long way here for the Coosa Eagles. Here's the kick. That's end over end. It's going to drop into the arms of Keenan Dixon. He's certainly a guy that can get a big return if you're not careful. He stays up, breaks up the middle of the field, gets down to the 27-yard line. Gil Mauer, that's a great tackle by Gil. Good job. He was uh, he had a lot of green grass in front of him, and, and Gil made a great open field tackle. Nice he job, really Gil. did. Yep. He saved the big return we were just speaking about. Yes, he did. So even with all those fireworks, they're still, Coosa still starts out inside their own 20, I mean 30. Starting on the 29 yard, well actually 28 yard line is where they got spotted right now. 4.59 left in the game, 21-6. Darlington up by a couple of scores. Shotgun formation, two wide set on the far side, a couple on the near. Logan Pledger ready to take the snap. He's got it in his hands, rolling out, looking to pass from the pocket, and it's going to be incomplete. That actually went off the shoulder pads of one of the Darlington Tigers. It looked like Luke Pledger Lewis. Pass I think you're right. You got a penalty flag. Penalty. I didn't, don't see where the flag was. Mm, it's right here at about the 28-yard line, but I don't, I don't know what the call is. And I didn't see what they signaled. Interference? I don't know. Penalty assessed against the Tigers. It's against the Darlington Tigers. Pass interference. Pass interference, yep. I'm not sure how that was pass interference since the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure about that. Tommy Ath is not sure about it either. You can see him over there talking to the official on the far sidelines. I think you guys are on the same page about that one. High school football night on WLAQ, 21-6. Darlington up over the Coosa Eagles here at Branch Bragg Field, 454. Big crowd on hand tonight. I don't know if we've pointed that out quite enough. because Waving Coosa the flag off now. Okay. That penalty has been waved off. The ball was batted by a defender, nullifying pass interference. 
All right, so second and ten, Coosa Eagles with the ball. Well, I guess Tommy played his case and uh, <laughs> better than Todd did. I guess so. <laughs> He came at it with as much enthusiasm, that was for sure. Three wide receivers to the far side, one on the near. Quarterback's going to run the football, but he's not going to get very far with it. He picked up maybe a yard or two. I've been on the sidelines when Tommy was working in official. Yeah. He's a master of it. It's some, really something to see. What is his strategy? Just keep him talking and be so disappointed. Like his heart is broken because <laughs> that call is so bad. You've really got to reconsider it. I'm doing you a favor by reminding you. Uh, he's just good at it. That's hilarious. <laughs> now you make me want to be down there so I can experience what that's like. There's nothing like being on a high school football sideline. A lot goes on. Third and nine for the Coosa Eagles, working right to left. They put the ball in the air, and that is incomplete. A little bit of contact, but nowhere near enough for an official to throw a flag on that one. Yeah, if anything, they might have it had to have been offensive interference because uh, uh, who was that? That was Roth Wilcox. He had position on yeah. the ball. Wide receiver Malachi Martin may have bumped him just a little bit, but so Kusa is going to have to punt the ball again, and this has just been a quiet night in terms of their offense. They've scored six points. I expected a little bit more desperation this time when they got the ball. Of course, they may have a fake punt in mind here. They've got somebody that can run it back there. Well, this is it right here. I suspect Darling's going to be in that punt save formation. They got a couple men back standing around the 43-yard line. Here's Keenan Dixon. He's just going to kick it away, and Casey Gunn is going to get the heck away from it so he doesn't touch it. And so it's going to die right at the 39. Things are not looking up here for the Coosa Eagles, but they are for the Darlington Tigers. Here in the fourth quarter. Well, if, if Darlington gets out of here with a win tonight, you're going to hear a big sigh of relief coming from that Darlington bus when all the players and coaches get uh, get back on there. I tell you, this Coosa team's a, a good squad, and they had an unfortunate loss last week against Trine. It was just a wild night. And then they came up against a really good Darlington team, poured their hearts out onto the field. So you hate it for them to start 0-2 because, really, man, this doesn't look like an 0-2 no, type of team. No, this is a good football team. They're going to make some uh, They'll make some waves in 7-AA before the season's over. Shotgun formation. Frank Manning's been in most of the second half for Darlington at quarterback. Gives it to Colin Rogers. Helps him out quite a bit by gashing him for an eight-yard run. I and mean, that's exactly what you want to do right now if you're Darlington. You're in the driver's seat. You're up 21 to 6. You've got under four minutes to play. Keep the ball on the ground. Keep the chains moving and eat this clock and head back to K Spring Row with a victory. Well, now the referees have decided to have a conference. Now. There's no flag on the field. I don't know. Well, we hadn't had enough wild stuff and drama here in the second half, so I guess we should add some before we get this game in the books. I don't know what they're saying, but I am just bet you Todd Wheeler is not going to be happy about it. <laughs> he is. Oh, the band playing maybe? Maybe they're telling the band not to play. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what it is. All right, we're good. I don't think it was noticeable. I'm surprised. So the band has been silenced here at Coosa High School. <laughs> the band must the play on. The band in Dixie That's can no right. longer play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I love the enthusiasm, man. They were they were having a good time over there. Todd's telling them to stop again. They start playing again. You can, the drum section is just <laughs> hard to keep under control. Shotgun formation. You got second down and two for Darlington. They give it to Colin Rogers, and he's going to be stopped for a loss of about three. That was a bad snap. Frank did well to get down there and get that ball off the ground and uh, just get it handed off and not lose the lose control of the ball there. That's a nice play by Frank. Well, this game's almost in the books. We're under the three-minute mark. Darlington's going to get back to the line of scrimmage with a third down and four. Tommy Atha checks back into the game. They're going to have a wide receiver to the far side. That'll be Carson Swiger. Here to the near side will be Barrett Wade. And we haven't seen a pass from 
Manning yet. I don't think we will the rest of the game. No, I, I'll be surprised if they throw the ball. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Colin Rogers, and he picks up two or three yards. That'll bring up fourth down, and we'll see Darlington punt. Again, I'm so impressed with Frank, the way he carries out his fakes. And, you know, he stops them for just a second. It's just a brief second before they realize he, he doesn't have the ball, but instead he's just uh, doing his best and doing what he can. And I mean, to he help came, his team. came into a tough situation. He's done a good job of managing the game, and I think he's doing exactly what the coaching staff has asked him to do. I think, think you're right. Timeout, Eagles. So the Coos Eagles will take a timeout with just under two minutes left to preserve a little bit of this clock before the punt takes place, and so we're going to do the same thing. You're listening to WLAQAM 1410, Darlington 21, Coosa 6. We'll be back for the final two minutes of the game after a quick break. Branch Frag Field, Eagle Stadium. Coosa trails the Darlington Tigers 21 to six. Pepper, uh, Darlington is off to a great start to the season. Beat Pepper 44 to 14 last week. Now playing another Double A school out of Seven Double A, and it looks like they'll come away with a hit win here unless something crazy happens here in the final two minutes. And that's a heck of a way to start the season. Power formation here from Darlington. They try to get couple of yards here and perhaps they were just going for that hard count and didn't get it. So we're going to have a timeout called by the Darlington Tigers. I believe that's Darlington's first time out of the half. Is that, uh, was that Eagles' second time out of the half? Or the uh, first? You know, I, the scoreboard shows the Eagles have taken their second time out and Darlington have taken their first. And I actually do think they're they're keeping up with it over there. A lot of times we go places you never know yeah. how many timeouts there are, but I think they're doing a really good job here in Coosa. We're going to keep it right here through this timeout. Darlington Tigers are already coming back out onto the field, and they're just going to go ahead and punt it away. I did not think that they were going to run a play on that fourth and three situation. Coosa didn't think they were going to run a play no. either. And nobody was fooled. As we talked about earlier in the game, you know, Todd Wheeler and Tommy Eighth have been friends for a long, long time, and they certainly know each other's tendencies for sure. Two guys are going back deep here for the Coosa Eagles. One of them is going to be Terry Curry, and the other one's Keenan Dixon. That's what we've seen throughout the evening. And Tate Routledge punted away here for the Darlington Tigers. Ball's in the air. Boy, he got a good boot on that one. That's going to drop it about the 10. And they will stop it at the one-yard line. Wow. Check that out. Wow. Holy cow, what a punt. Special teams got good punt, good coverage down there. I'm not sure why that uh, Kusa guy let the ball go. I thought they'd take it and try to get a run out of it. But uh, he was standing on about the 20 and let it go, and it bounced all the way down to the one-yard line. Almost went in the end zone. That was a heck of a punt right there. I think they're going to call it the two, but either way, I don't. you can't pit them back much further than that. It's deep in their own territory for sure. So Coos is going to start on their own two with 145 left. They've only got to go 98 yards. Shotgun formation quarterbacks trying to get them out of jail from in their own end zone. In the backfield, it's going to be Jalen Hodge. Logan Pledger takes the snap, gives it to Hodge, and he's able to get them a little bit of breathing room with a pickup of maybe two yards. We'll see. Still not outside the five. He's out the middle, number two, Jalen Hodge. That was just uh, that base handoff out of the shotgun. No gain on the play, bring up second and ten. So handing off, lined up on the left and handing off going to the right side of the line. That was a game of about close to one, so we'll call it second and nine. Shotgun formation out of the end zone, so that didn't change the scenario much. Quarterback Pledger's got the ball, puts it in the air, and this one is going to be caught. What a catch. No, no it's loose on the it. turf. That was excellent coverage by the Darlington Tigers. Yes, sir. Uh, that was Wilcox, and he didn't give up on the ball just because it, 
he got it in his hands. He, he stayed with it and able to knock that ball loose. He had caught it. It was in his hands, and uh, Roth just stayed with it and put his hand in there and stripped it out. Good. That was, that's a big play, big-time play. Now we're down to the one-minute mark of this football game with Darlington up 21-6, to and Kusa backed up against their own goal line and third down. Logan Pledger will line him up with two wide on the far side, one on the near. Here comes the snap. He's looking to pass, puts it in the air, and this one's going to be caught over on the right sidelines by Malachi Martin. This is going to be short of the first, first down. down. Yeah, they can call it a little short, but they may, they may, they may, they may have measure. gotten it. They may have got it, yeah. 37 seconds left on the clock, and they're going to call that one short. Darlington Tiger fans on their feet. They can smell the victory. And we're going to have a timeout call. 29.7 seconds left on the clock. And we will go ahead and take one more timeout. We'll send it back to the studio for 30 seconds. 21-6, Darlington on top of the Eagles. We'll be back to wrap it up in a couple of seconds. Thank you. Okay, he wants us to wrap it up as soon as the game's okay. over because he's got to get up front for the gotcha. scoreboard. So I can do that. Oh, uh, Rogers. Special thank you for attending the last game. Go back to he's good at Roth or uh, all right. Or Colin Rogers, 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 even. Okay, we're, we're kind of having a little off-air conversation that's carried over about who we're going to award the player of the game to, the icing on the cake, Honeymoon Bakery player of the game. And we may have tipped our hand a little bit, but we're, we're having a little discussion, and we're going to have to wrap it up quick tonight because the Rome Orthopedic Center high school football scoreboard show is supposed to begin at 10, and the big guy needs to get up front. And he's back here with us on the board on the AM, and that shows on the FM. So... We'll figure that out over the course of the next few plays, but nonetheless, I'm probably just going to put the pressure on Eddie over here. <laughs> uh, shotgun formation, 29 seconds left in the game. Pledger is rolling out. He is going to tuck and run, gets to the 15, runs out of bounds at about the 16, and he does get the Pledger first down. Well, I, I I think in considering that long run that he had to get that touchdown that kind of stretched the lead out there, I think it, we can't go wrong with Griffin Brewster. I think you're right. I think you're indeed right. So before the game's even over, we can tell you that our Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game tonight is officially Griffin, Griffin Brewster. Brewster. And we hope he's uh, not injured very badly. We don't know what the nature of his injury is, but he hasn't been in since about halfway through the fourth quarter. Pledger runs, 16 seconds left on the clock. Hoos is out of timeout, so they'll get to the line of scrimmage quickly either that or they'll just call it a day and run the clock out, which is going to be the case. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the Darlington Tigers have officially won this one and put it in the books. 21-6 to 6 is your final score as the Tigers come